Shahili di, am I audible? Yes. Okay. Yes, you are audible. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. sir. Good afternoon, okay. sir. Good afternoon. We, hello, uh, Sitoma, madam. Hello, hello, professor. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Okay, okay, okay. I was a I, bit nervous because, uh, you know, at the beginning, my okay. Zoom wasn't responding. So I wasn't sure. It just shows that host is trying to connect or something. So I wasn't sure that whether you guys are on or not. Okay, okay. And it must be very, I um, mean, early morning at very your early. place. Yes, okay, yes. Okay. It's uh, 4, 4, uh, 4 30, close okay, to 4 30 okay. in the morning. So, sir, sir it's good morning for you. Yeah, it's uh, very good, good morning, morning Thank for you. you. <laughs> yeah. Sir, actually, um, we are very sorry too because we can't, uh, can we, I mean, adjust the program or arrange the program. No, no, no I understand. I understand completely. But, you don't uh, have to apologize for anything. But this time, actually, we had no other options since the program was pre planned and we couldn't uh, make any kinds of alterations. So, but still, no, you, that's have fine. Given that's us time. Fine. you have given us yeah. so much time, and I really thank you for that's that. It. Yeah, sure, sure. Actually, I'm sorry that I couldn't I couldn't attend all of your program because of the time okay. difference. I understand. I understand. I understand. I had to set my alarm to wake up this early. <laughs> yes, you Definitely. understand. Definitely. So. And 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 uh, I I have been in regular touch with Shushama, and she was uh, telling me that yeah, it, it must be late night at Sir's place. Uh, yes, yes. So I apologize but, on my behalf. Uh, yes, thank you. But I did see your program. Shushama sent me a link, yes, a video yes. link, and yes. I I watched most of it okay so thank, you. I, thank you sir uh, i i even uh, know you and uh, uh Shohali, madam because okay, i've okay. been seeing you thank two you, sir. dr dr shahidi uh, choudhury is is currently the head of the department of sociology at our institution and uh, that's uh, nice. yeah nice. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah no, Oscar. and she no, is also Oscar. a very i mean energetic and efficient academician so yes, we are yes, also very happy to have So our... are you, so are you, because I've been watching you conduct this exactly. uh, conference. <laughs> exactly. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Sir, how is, I mean, the situation there at your place? I mean, what is the situation uh, right now? Situation, you mean the law law and order situation or uh, any mean, other situation? I mean, regarding this uh, pandemic, I mean, uh, we are all in yes, crisis. Yes, yeah. it's, uh, as you know, uh, as I'm sure you know, like India, you know, US is a very large country. The yes. part of India where I reside, like in Pennsylvania, central Pennsylvania, it's not that okay. bad. Okay. okay. Central Pennsylvania is not bad. It's a rural area, very much like Belda Place. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I have been watch. You know, I've been seeing Belda College on uh, Google Map, and okay. my place, Lock Haven in Pennsylvania, looks yes. very much like Belda. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's very isolated. So you know, not not that very many people here. So our situation is not, actually all not all that bad. But okay. big cities like New York, Philadelphia, their yes. situation is uh, it's getting better. But you know, we had our I share. Understand. We I had know. so much death. So we had our share. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I hope that we get better soon. Definitely. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that. And uh, 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 Dr. Shahili, I just wanted to ask you, like, we have three presentations in this session. So yes. uh, are the presenters ready? I mean, if they're ready, and uh, let me just inquire whether we have with us our, uh, our chairperson. Who is the chair, chair? Who will be chairing? Uh, I think uh, Professor, Sinha. Yeah, Professor Anandamoy Sinha. Uh, sir, are you there? <clears throat> uh, Rik, is, Rik has joined us. Okay, okay, sir. He's there. He has, he's there. He's there. Yeah, he's there, I know, but uh, I, I'm just uh, inquiring whether he could listen us or not. I mean, since he's muted, I mean, Professor Anandama Sinha, can you please unmute yourself? Yeah, yeah, just unmute. Okay, 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 sir is there, sir is there. Okay, okay no issues. Yeah, 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 we can listen. hear you. We can hear you, sir. Yeah, good to see you for a long time. We can hear you. Uh, oh, Same uh, here, Anandama. Yes, yes, Anandamayda, you are start? audible. Uh, Shall we start? I mean, uh, please. Uh... Okay, okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Just, uh, I'm just curious. Do you have any uh, non-Bengali speaking audience? Uh, or... Yes, sir, definitely. Definitely. We do have many non-Bengali speaking audiences because we have received papers. And uh, I mean, many participants have joined from uh, different corners of our country. I mean, India and also from abroad too. 
So yeah, that's uh, wonderful. That's wonderful yeah, yeah. to know because I, I wasn't sure because most of the name I see they are Bengali names. So I thought <laughs> okay, that. Okay. okay. But okay. Uh, you know, I really uh, have to say that it's a very nice initiative on your part, Belda College part, because you know it's a relatively small college, but the initiative you have taken. As I said, I've been watching that uh, earlier video. It's very laudable, very laudable. And uh, you know, I think this is one advantage probably of this pandemic that uh, it doesn't matter where you are in the world and you exactly, can, exactly, you, can exactly. you can convene a conference of international uh, you know, quality. Uh, exactly. It doesn't matter you know, how big or how small of an institution you are. So that's very laudable. That, it only know, matters how much, much how much yes, academically sir. engaged we are. That's what matters. Absolutely, absolutely. That's it. Doesn't matter to fantastic. what institute we are attached. Yeah, that's absolutely, very absolutely right. With this belief and with this uh, encouragement only, uh, we are definitely not uh, a big institute like yours, but we are a very small college. No, our own is small our, too. Our own is small college. And our faculty yeah. fraternity, I mean, it, we have we do share a very strong bonding among ourselves. And that's this is why only absolutely. we are able to conduct this kind of programs, especially uh, in an online platform, because this is not very, I mean, we are not very much familiar with this kind of platforms. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and this is uh, newly to most, yeah, yeah, this is new to most of us. So yes. uh, thank you so much, sir. And sir, uh, we will have a session of, uh, Saheli, uh, if we get a permission from our chair, then okay. Uh, our chair is there. Soon. Okay, our chair is uh, a chair is present. Yeah. He is Asinda already connected. Will be joining us soon. Okay. Asinda. And uh, we we have our presenters ready. Okay. We okay. we have our presenters ready. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So let me just uh, let me just uh, tell that uh, this is our this will be our third technical session. This will be our third technical session. And in this third technical session, we will have three paper presentations. The names will be announced by Dr. Saheli Chaudhary. And in this session, we have with us our chairperson, Professor Anandamai Sinha, who is an assistant professor in the Department of Economics, Belda College. And also we have with us our reporter, uh, Ms. Rik Roy. She is a faculty from the Department of Computer Science. Rik, I welcome you to this conference. And uh, and we have also uh, many of our faculty members uh, from us. our uh, yeah, host college only who have joined us. So I welcome all of you. I could see Balaram, I could see Rakhidi, I could see many of them. We have uh, joined Toda as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joint Toda is also here. Yeah, yeah. So I welcome all of you. And uh, I think, uh, Shahari, we can begin our presentations. Okay, uh, otherwise, okay. we will run short of time. Exactly, exactly. Okay, okay. Uh, okay thank you, Shritamadi. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we, in this slot, we have three presenters. And this slot is from 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Each presenter will get seven minutes for presentation and plus three minutes for interactive session. So it's total 10 minutes. But for presentation, the presenters will be given only seven minutes. So the first presenter is Mr. Hare Krishna Kuiri. Second presenter is Ms. Modhumita Jana. And third presenter is Ms. Tabassum Magbul. Ms. Tabassum Magbul is from Kashmir. Uh, we have participants from Kashmir, so we are very happy for that. And uh, Shubita, I would like to uh, ask you whether uh, Ms. Tabassum Magbul has joined us. Because I can see Mr. Kuiri and Madhumita Jana, Madam, with us. I'm checking, I'm checking. Okay, okay. Whoever is ready, we can start with. with Fine, no no problem. So, uh, Anandamayda, uh, hello. Uh, Mr. Anandamai Sinha? Sir, are you ready? Uh, Anandamai, sir, mute it. Uh, uh, sir, can you please unmute yourself? Uh, uh, Mr. Anandamai Sinha, can you please unmute yourself? Yeah. Anandamai, can you request? Yes. Yeah. Can you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so over to you, Anandamai. Well, I should I start now? Yes, 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 sure, sure, yes, yes. I welcome all the participants, the speakers, and those in the audience to this session. And this session, as you have heard or you know, is for papers that deal with the socioeconomic impact of this pandemic. 
by now, I think we all agree that the socioeconomic impact of this pandemic runs really, really deep. So it will, I hope, uh, this half hour session will be an illuminating one. And my best wishes to all the speakers. Okay, so really, you can carry on. Yeah, yeah. Please announce the name of the paper presenter. Yes, the first yes. paper presenter that we have for this session is Mr. Hare Krishna Kuiri, and the title of his paper is Life of Adivasis During the Pandemic. Mr. Kuiri, kindly introduce yourself before presenting. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah, sure. yes. yes. I'm a MA of 10th semester student from Central University of Jharkhand. So, may I share my screen? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. So, Johar and good afternoon to all. My topic is life of Adivasis during the pandemic. I would like to focus this particular topic in Jharkhand through a case study. I think it is the very true that whenever the situations become bad or critical, then the old sufferer are the marginalized groups. And in this lockdown have had a drastic effect on the life of the Adivasis. So before I go into further, I would like to take a very short report of the Jharkhand. The first case was confirmed in 31st March and till yesterday 1765 cases has confirmed including 8 deaths and 905 recoveries. So this is the graph of that. These are the important initiatives that has been taken by the Jharkhand government. This is the news of the 2nd May and 28th May. The special trains and chartered flights were arranged for the migrant workers to bring them back from Kerala, from Leh, from Andaman, and, all, and also uh, Mumbai. And this is the very recent news. In the last is last Saturday, Jharkhand government sent 1,685 workers into the BRO projects, following all the rules and uh, all the rules and labor laws. The BRO, the short form, this is the short form, and the full form is the Border Roads Organization. You know. The India is the second largest tribal populated country and Jharkhand is one of the most tribal populated state where there are 85 lakhs Adivasis including around 26.2% of the populations and 32 different tribal groups. The life of Adivasis is not easy at all. They are still struggling for their life, for their basic needs. They are fighting for their Jal Jangal and Jameen. So these are the these are the issues faced by the Adivasis during this pandemic. You would be surprised knowing that 40% of the minerals is provided by Jharkhand and 39.1% of the populations under the is is under the below poverty level, below poverty, below poverty level. So these are the uh, lack of. So the first point is lack of information on COVID-19. I would like to inform you that 32 percent of villages are still not electrified. News usually spread there from the by the words of mouth. 
and the information and announcement regarding this COVID-19 doesn't reach these places. Lack of the health facilities. Yesterday, Dr. Sen had said about the health care system and the health workers. And we can imagine what would be the situations in this type, this remote areas. There are the many villages like the district of the uh, Khoti, uh, Gumla, and Simdega district. Their Adivasis have to cover 20 kilometers to get their primary health facilities. And in this lockdown, there are the, the health facilities are very much poor at that places. PDS system or public distribution system doesn't reach these places. There are the many cooperative systems. Co cooperative system or the, there are the many cooperative societies. There they comes under the Jharkhand government or they merged with the central government's uh, the Bandhan Yojana. They mainly promote the MAP or minor forest product. But in this lockdown, everything is shut down. The issue of migrant workers. We know the conditions of the migrant workers. They are the, either they are stuck into the cities or they are trying to fight, uh, come back. They are struggling to come back from their of native places, hardly they get managed one meal a day. Now the question is, how are the Adivasi dealing with this COVID-19? I think they are trying to cope up with this COVID-19 as their level base. They coordinate with the health department like ASA Karmis and uh, NM workers. They self-isolated themselves and coordinate the villages from creating... Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Quidi. Uh, you have to conclude uh, soon. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. See you. They are, of course, they are having their rules of the central and state governments. And I would like to conclude this topic saying the quote of the John Dres. John Dres is an economist and uh, social activist. He says that many state governments have already initiated valuable social security measures, but they are far from the adequate. So you know that there are the, uh, of course, the, uh, the state government and central government has taken many institutes. The path is too long and a lot of things so will remains to do. So thank you. Thank you. Dr. Sinha is, uh, Mr. Sinha is there? Yes. Yes. Okay, I thank uh, Mr. Kuiri. I think he has rightly pointed out that uh, it's wrong to claim that this pandemic doesn't discriminate by citing the hardships that the Adivasis have to go through during this pandemic. It's a very neat presentation. Thank you for him. Thank, thank you to him. Can you please uh, announce the name of the next presenter? Yes. Our next presenter is Ms. Madhumita Jana, who is an assistant professor from Shakrel ABS Mahavidyalay, Kultikri, Jhargram. Her presentation is on impact of COVID-19 on economy in India. Uh, over to the chair. Uh, 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 yes, uh, you have to unmute yourself, uh, Miss Madhumita Jana. You have to unmute. Yes, yes. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Ma'am, shun Oh. Respected chairperson, resource persons. You may continue. Uh, uh, Jini, you may continue. 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 You may continue.
भट्टाचार्य कोविड in uhan or originated in uhan and has spread rapidly across the world the world health organization has declared it to be a pandemic the covid 19 has brought our entire nation to a halt about 180 countries are steadily going into affected condition and businesses across the world are operating in fear of an impending collapse of global financial markets in this situation the economic conditions became become problematic in different aspect in india i want to discuss about following aspect of indian economy such as raw materials pharmaceuticals tourism aviation agriculture manufacturing etc nearly 55% of electronics imported by india from different countries and these imports have already slid down in light of coronavirus outbreak as a counter measure india is considering the promotion of indigenous production in a bid to reduce dependency on a single market additionally for export of raw materials like organic chemicals natural fuels cotton etc it is likely to lead to a substantial trade deficit for india the total of pharmaceutical industry is of significant problem for india mainly active pharmaceutical ingredients that is api are imported from other countries these active ingredients are essential to a large number for pharmaceutical manufacturing companies in our country as a result it creates vital problem in indian economy india is a big cultural and historical tourism attracting domestic and foreign people throughout the year the whole tourism value chain including hotels restaurants attractions agents and operators is expected to face high losses which affect indian economy with the covid 19 pandemic the government of india suspended tourist visas airlines etc all national and international flights were cancelled for varying periods now a few domestic flights have been started this leads to a sharp drop of indian economy it was found that the farmers could not harvest their crop in the past month and those who did harvest 
reported a high yield loss. A majority of farmers are facing difficulty for the next session also, which affects national economy. Major companies in India had temporarily suspended or significantly re reduced op operation in a number of manufacturing facilities and factories across the country. Nearly all two-wheeler and four-wheeler companies put to stop to production till further notice, which result falling of economic conditions. Now a days ago, production has been started slightly. Excuse me, madam, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, you have to conclude soon. You have uh, one and a half to two minutes left. Okay, okay. The result of lockdown situation are serve rise in unemployment, stress on supply chains, decrease in government income, collapse of the tourism industry, collapse of the hospitality industry, reduce consumer activity. Ever since the first COVID-19 case was confirmed in India, after that, numerous companies have instituted a work from home drill using critical resources to understand whether remote working conditions are feasible. That being said, remote working also has its limitations and cannot be carried out by other sectors like retail, hospitality, or manufacturing, leaving them no choice. But to face businesses interruption. Employee safety. I to interrupt you, madam, uh, but uh, seven minutes, I actually over. So if you could just conclude your session and. Okay, okay. okay. Employee safety is, is the need of the hour. Organizers are stepping up and maintaining an open line of communication with all their stakeholders, including employees and customers. Thanks to all. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, Anandamai, yes. sir? Yes, yes. I think uh, uh, Professor Jana <laughs> tried to try to document the, the damages that this pandemic has inflicted on the various sectors of the economy within a very short span of time. We understand that it's a very vast subject. Uh, so you can't do justice within uh, seven or 10 minutes, but it was okay. But uh, so we can now uh, go to our next speaker. I think time is already running. So I'm not uh, going to uh, deal more on that. Okay. Our Please continue, please. Our next presentation will be given by Ms. Tabassam Magbul, who is a PhD research scholar of, from Department of Sociology of University of Kashmir. And her presentation is on socioeconomic impact of COVID-19 on human lives, a sociological inquiry. Ms. Magbul, uh, can you... Are you there? Yes, I called her and she said that she's connected. Yes, Tabassum yeah. Magbul is connected, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Tabassum, uh, can you hear us? She is connected. Uh, hello, Tabassum. She joined without audio. Tabassum, uh, kindly join with audio. Please turn on your computer audio. You'll be able to hear. Uh, yes, uh, Tabasu Magbul, yes, we can see her, yes. Okay, okay, okay. I think uh, if, I do not know whether she's using a laptop or a mobile. If she's using a laptop, then on the uh, left-hand side at the corner in the bottom, there is an option. 
uh, near mute where there is an option turn on computer audio you can just turn on your audio i think yeah. uh, i think uh, she is connecting yes connecting yes we can understand she uh, since she is connecting from kashmir so we can understand there is some connectivity issue exactly exactly uh -huh. let us wait for a few minutes uh, for a minute to, uh, to see whether she can okay okay he can... okay okay he is he's here yeah, yeah we connect. can see him he's yeah uh you are not audible uh okay he is connecting from mobile mm. and he is unable to unmute if or turn on the computer miss makbul uh, there is a mute Mr. button makbul. on the left bottom corner of your screen if you are connected from your mobile phone you you can click on that and then connect to device audio actually when i spoke over the phone um Uh, a lady responded so that is why i'm using the term miss yeah 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 it's okay i also thought initially but now i could <laughs> see him <laughs> sorry for this no it's okay <laughs> okay okay um i uh, i think uh, exactly now you can unmute yourself uh, please unmute yourself hello unmuted unmuted okay 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 please please can unmute okay 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 he has unmuted himself mm hmm hmm hello 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 ma'am yes uh, are you mr tabassum makbul Yeah, ma yes ma'am okay okay actually when i spoke over the phone a lady picked it up and she confirmed it okay fine oh, sorry ma'am you were not audible okay she, he has not turned on his computer audio i guess that's why he is unable to hear us uh, kindly turn kind of... on your uh, computer yes ma'am I, i i did it yes okay. fine then please uh, begin with your presentation thank you the uh, actually my presentation is all about the topic socio economic impact of covid-19 on human lives sociological and okay we cannot see your ppt hmm okay 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 fine uh, fine ma'am uh, you can go okay fine mm. There is no screen screen sharing option, na? No? no, actually, she, he, no, actually, he is connecting from the mobile and he is displaying oh. it. No, no, no problem. Yes, you may continue. No problem. Uh, you may continue with oral presentation also. No issues. No issue. Yeah. Exactly. Can I put my phone down, ma'am? Yes, yes. You can uh, continue with your oh, verbal presentation. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Let me start. by intro introducing my presentation the introductory part of my presentation is uh we are facing a global health crisis unlike any in the 75 years history of the united nations one that is killing people spreading human suffering and <clears throat> of ending people's lives but this is much more than a health crisis it's a human crisis the coronavirus disease covid-19 is at attacking societies at their core in just 12 weeks the outbreak of novel coronavirus disease covid-19 has gone from an initially discreet outbreak to a raging pandemic now social and economic impacts of covid-19 the effects on people and the formal and informal economy are devastating covid-19 is hitting hard and already weak 
weak and fragile world economy. Global growth in 2019 was already the slowest since the global financial crisis of 2008 and 9. COVID-19 has plugged the world economy into a recession with the potential of deep, deep consequences and historical levels of unemployment and deprivation. Necessary measures to contain the spread of disease through quarantines, travel restrictions, and lockdown of cities have resulted in a significant reduction in demand and supply. Economic activities in transportation, retail, trade, leisure, hospi hospitality, and recreation has be have been battered. <clears throat> and we have seen from plunging stock markets that public trust in the health response has direct and immediate economic effects. The impacts are complex and affect us all tra tragically. The COVID-19 crisis risks reversing decades of pro progress in the fight against poverty and exacerbating <clears throat> already high levels of inequality within and between countries. Volatility, volatility <clears throat> combined in some countries with market tempering and stock piling is starting to co impact the price prices of food. The most vulnerable, including women, children, the elderly, and informal workers will be hit the hardest. The impact on the environment and the other hand is likely to be positive on the short term as the drastic reduction in economic activity brought about by the crisis has reduced carbon dioxide emissions and pollution in many areas. Such improvements are destined to be short lived unless countries deliver on their commitment to sustainable development once the crisis is over and the global economy restarts. Now, the conclusion of the presentation, let me explain it in front of you. <clears throat> while, we are, while we deal with the crisis, we must use the opportunity to recover better and build a sustainable society. These crises require all of us to make hard choices. These choices will be easier to explain and easier to bear if we make the make them together. Governments taking action in lockstep will find that their public will trust their responses and adhere to the onerous asks made of them. It's clear the world needs a quantum shift in the approach and architecture in pandemic preparedness. WHO estimated that it will require 100 million USD over the next five years to prevent and prepare the next pandemic in 67 low and middle income countries and to build an interconnected global health emergency system for data work force and supplies. Similarly, countries must increase spending on primary health care by at least 1% of their gross domestic product if the world is to close glaring coverage gaps and meet health targets we agreed in 2015. It must be done. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Magbul. Thank you. Anandamai, sir? Yes. <clears throat> I think uh, uh, the, this pandemic has fundamentally changed our social lives. So I would have loved to uh, hear more about the social cost of this pandemic and not just the economic cost, as he is a student of sociology. But I have a question for him. I think uh, we all know that Kashmir is under lockdown for a much longer period than the rest of the country, although for different reasons. I would like to know how the young people in Kashmir are coping with uh, this social distancing or physical distancing, as we are calling it. Sorry, sir. Can you please repeat the question, please? Sir. I would like to know from you how the 
young people in Kashmir are coping with this uh, social distancing uh, norms that are in place now? All right, sir. <clears throat> Actually, uh, uh, people in Kashmir who are engaged with the studies or nowadays taking online classes, taking online lectures, taking online uh, uh, workshops so that they can uh, make themselves busy in these uh, in these days. Like we are already in lockdown and we have uh, actually faced a lot here by this coronavirus disease as it's spreading uh, fastly here in Kashmir also. So uh, government has government officials have actually taken some initiatives in order to prevent people from going outside. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Nagul. Uh, Sahilidi? Yes. Uh, yeah. With this, uh, we come to the end of the paper presentation session. Now, the uh, session is open for question. Arik, uh, do you see any question in our chat box? No, there are no questions uh, in the chat box, neither on YouTube. Well, if can I put forward a question? Yes, please, Oshita, yeah. please. Uh, I have a question for the first presenter of this session, Mr. Kuiri. Uh, Mr. Kuiri has made a very good presentation, uh, told us about the suffering of the Adivasi people of Jhattakon and how they are uh, coping with this pandemic. Uh, the tribal people of India uh, are marginalized, they are deprived on several fronts. Uh, I'd like to know from you uh, how these people uh, are tackling, are dealing with the uh, problem of uh, lack of knowledge uh, born out of their illiteracy, uh, born out of their ignorance regarding different aspects of the COVID-19 pandemic. I hope that uh, like, um, I think that like many of us, uh, like many of the educated people, the people who live in the uh, jungle infested areas of Jharkhand, and so much aware of different aspects of the virus and how they uh, are, uh, how people get contaminated and social distancing, how these people are dealing with such problems. Do you have any knowledge in this figure? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Find among them in this okay. context. I look, I would like to share my uh, view about these questions and uh, these queries. Keep uh, in this period, I was also struck in Jharkhand, and uh, so I personally saw that uh, uh, saw the situation. Uh, there are many NGOs who help them uh, to uh, educate these uh, uh, Adivasi people, and uh, as the Anganwadis are stopped, I mean they are all closed. So. Uh, no, the educations uh, in this matter of educations, uh, they couldn't get these facilities. And uh, of course, the tribal people are more obedient and they are very much aware about their responsibilities. Though the informations and uh, proper announcement couldn't reach these places. Uh, in this time, you know, the Sarhul festival is the biggest festival of these uh, Adivasis. So uh, this time, this time they didn't they didn't celebrate this festival grandly they follows all the rules and regulations of the uh, local panchayats and uh, the police stations 
whatever they are instructed they follow so that's the situation i think i think i can have able... yes sir thank you sir thank you so much uh, do we have any other question we do have a question in the chat box okay well, i think we are going to take this question as a last question and then yes. we are going to move to the next session yes okay the question is what should be our contribution towards strengthening the economy and survival post covid 19 um uh, uh, i'm just interfering once uh, dr ali hussain can you please specify to whom your question is directed to uh, which speaker is this question for or uh, or anybody can uh, take up this question uh, the question is for uh, our second speaker ms uh, madhumita jana, jana okay madam, yes think, okay uh, do we have madhumita jana madam with us now yes it's it's for the second speaker okay okay yes he's there he is yes, there uh, madam she's kindly there, uh, kindly unmute madam, yourself uh, okay, okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, madam, uh, we have a question for you by Dr. Ali Hossein, and the question is: What should be our contribution towards strengthening the economy and survival post COVID nineteen? Actually, ma'am, I have no deep knowledge about this. I am the teacher of Sanskrit, but I have little bit interest about the economy in the present COVID nineteen situation. Okay, so do you have any suggestion like how we can strengthen the economy uh, post uh, COVID, like through the uh, small research that you have done? Any suggestion? No, no, no. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Over to you, Mr. Anandomai Sinha. Okay, I think um, as for the question, I think many economists have already pointed out the way uh, we can best get out of this mess. and uh, most of them i think most economists are of the opinion that the government should uh, provide some boost to domestic demand especially should uh, provide cash to the people poor people who will spend most of it so i'm not going to uh, go the, into the details here uh, to conclude this session i would just like to point out the, that the speakers within the limited time they, they had i think they tried their best to do justice to the topic they have chosen and uh, i think uh, it in, it is becoming increasingly clear to us that uh, the economic recession caused by this pandemic is uh, ultimately going to uh, claim more lives than the disease itself so in a way the socio economic impact of Uh, this disease is going to be more deadly than the disease or the pandemic or the virus uh, and economists are already uh, started uh, have already started comparing uh, it to the economic disastration the social dislocation or disorientation of the time of great depression so i thank all of all of you uh, or to the speakers i thank the speakers all the all those who are in the audience and to reek and to soheli to sitoma to everybody stay safe stay observant thank you thank you so much anand maida thank you thank you so much uh, with this we have come to the end of our third technical session and we had very uh, nice uh, we could hear very nice paper presentations thank you all now uh, let us start our fourth technical session so before i start let me just uh, enquire whether uh, shushma is here with us shushma are you here she was there yeah, yeah if you are, if you are please unmute yeah. yourself mm -hmm. Okay, if you are okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. And I, I, I have another query. Whether uh, Kasturi Madam is there? Doctor Kasturi Sinha Ghosh is she there? 
Yeah. Yes, I'm here. I'm okay, here. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, madam. Okay, so I'll begin. I'll start the fourth technical session. Now, uh, in this session, we have two invited presentations. So our first presenter will be Professor Muhammad Khalikuz Zaman. He is a professor from the Department of Geology and Physics of Lock Haven University, Pennsylvania. I welcome you, sir, to our two-day international conference, which is organized by the IQVC Bilda College in collaboration with Bangladesh Open University. I heartily welcome on behalf of our entire team. And uh, we have another speaker with us, Dr. Kasturi Sinha Ghos. She is currently working in the Department of Social Work uh, at Netaji Subhas Open University, Kolkata. And in this session, we have with us our chairperson, Dr. Jayantu Mukherjee. Uh, Dr. Jo <coughs> Dr. Mukherjee, yes, yeah. yeah. He, he, is, he, is, uh, he is the head of the Department of English, Billa College, and he is an excellent academician. And we are very happy to have him as our chair. Thank you so yes. much, sir. Thank you for your precious time. Thank you so much. And in this session, we ha also have with us our reporter, Shushama Mukherjee. Shushama, uh, you are here with... Okay, can you hear me? I can hear okay. you. Okay, okay. Shushama. Shushama is currently a guest faculty in the Department of Social Work at Pabna University of Science and Technology, Bangladesh. And she is also working as a research scholar in Assam Central University, Silchar. So thank you so much. And I now hand over this session to Dr. Jayantu Mukherjee for introducing our speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Sitoma. Good afternoon to all speakers, participants, and scholars who are in this platform. First of all, I want to say that we are really grateful and privileged to have with us Dr. Muhammad Khalikuz Zaman, who is at present the professor of geology at Lockhaven University. And his bio note is such lengthy that I'm afraid to read it whole. But as much as I can say that he was professor, chair, he chaired uh, the uh, chair professor of geology and physics since uh, from 2005 to 2008 and his area of study is uh, physics and geology and he's recipient of many national and international rewards so we are really pleased to, to have you with us and we want to get informed and uh, illuminate with your speech so i invite you to speak so have you with us Yes, yes, I'm here. Yes, sir, yes if sir. You do, sir, if you do not mind with the kind permission of the chair, I would just like to make a point that since we are running short of time, so you, you have 20 minutes at your hand to uh, make your presentation. Absolutely. So, uh, this is uh, an apology from my part. Thank no, you so much. That's all right. That's all right. Thanks for accommodating me. Thank and you, uh, I see in the audience, Dr. Khan. Uh, so you should have been a resource person at this pro in this program, but it is because <laughs> we are unable to uh, contact you beforehand. Otherwise, we would have uh, we could hear you more. So from not next time, definitely. I hope definitely this is not the last uh, opportunity for us. We are definitely. getting to know definitely. our uh, our you, friends, and I'm I'm making a lot of new friends, and I'm sure that we'll uh, see each other maybe face to face someday. And uh, thanks to Shoma for uh, putting me in uh, contact with the Belda College. And uh, since we are running, you know, a little short at times, good morning from uh, North America. And I'll just share my screen so that uh, we can start the presentation. And please give me a warning and I will not mind when I, when I have like two, two minutes or three minutes. Yes, sir. Okay. No problem, sir. Uh, Uh, as you can see from my uh, from the title, I have so it's connecting still. I uh, will give it a second. So when it's connecting, I would say that I have looked at the air quality data because air quality data for three countries in our subcontinent, for Dhaka, Bangladesh, Kolkata, uh, India or West Bengal and uh, New Delhi, and finally, Lahore, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I looked at their quality data for the time before the pandemic, meaning that April 
the month of April and May in 2019. And I compared the data uh, for April and May in 2020. So to 2019, April and May, which is before the pandemic and uh, 2020. So um, why air quality? Obviously, as all of you know, bad air quality can really make things worse uh, for respiratory problems like asthma and many of the other bronchitis and uh, respiratory problems, and uh, which can in turn make this you know, bad situation worse for COVID patients because main problem for COVID patients is, the, uh, is uh, respiratory problems. And uh, if your air quality is bad, then virus, that COVID virus can spread very easily as well. So there is a vicious nexus of the bad quality of air, respiratory problem that people may have, and then the COVID uh, pandemic. So air quality, I'm not going to go in detail because of the time constraint, air quality uh, index is measured based on five parameters, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, ground level ozone, and particulate matters. Particulate matters is the most important in this case. These are the very tiny, tiny particles that come out of various uh, fossil fuel burning and also the vehicle. So if you have the particulate matters measurement in the air, then you can actually calculate the AQI, which is air quality index. So um, these are just US EPA, Environmental Protection Agency standards for each of the five parameters that I mentioned. As I mentioned that, uh, Particulate matters uh, has a direct correlation with AQI. And this graph just shows that. I used the data for Dhaka City for April of 20, uh, 2019 to 2019. And this graph very clearly showing that uh, air quality has a direct correlation with particulate matter. So, um, and, and the R squared is 0.88. You know, from science standpoint, it's a very good correlation. So the, uh, this is the scale people use to measure the air quality index. This is breakdown on a scale of zero to 300 and zero to 50 is considered good air quality and 51 to 100 is moderate. And you can see the scale kind of goes up all the way to hazardous air quality. When air quality index is more than 300, so larger the number, worse the air quality is we are really looking so that our air quality would fall somewhere between zero to 50 and maybe from 51 to 100. So as you probably know, the world, world's most polluted countries in the world from air, you know, air quality standpoint is our subcontinent. You can see on this graph that Bangladesh in 2019 uh, was considered the worst uh, uh, you know, uh, place in terms of air quality and Pakistan was second and India's fifth last year. And uh, this graph is showing, or this map rather, is showing the most uh, worst place in terms of air quality, as you can see, it's in China, our subcontinent, and then into the Middle East, this is the most polluted region in the world. And my study compares the air quality before and after the pandemic in three of our subcontinental countries, like Pakistan, uh, India and Bangladesh, which is shown on the right side of this graph. So I have used the data, uh, air quality data from the US embassies and consulates, you know, archive. US embassies and consulates all around the world, they maintain air quality uh, on an hourly basis, hour to hour. So I have, I have taken advantage of that, uh, their data for, as I said, for the month of April and May, for the year 2019, meaning before pandemic and April and May uh, for 2020. So I've compared it hour by hour, hourly data for those, uh, uh, for those months, for three countries, as I mentioned. So here, for a comparison, I have taken also data for New York City, because I live in the US, as you have mentioned, and New York is considered the capital of the world in terms of the financial and economic activities. So New York City has more number of cars than maybe all the cars combined in Bangladesh, literally. So uh, I'm showing here that before the pandemic, New York City had their quality average was 25. If you remember, zero to uh, 50 is considered a really good quality air. And in the uh, air quality for this year, 2020, air quality is 22. 
So it has improved slightly, but still the air quality was very good to start with before even the pandemic. And this goes to show that our economic activities or the development does not have to compromise the environment, which is generally uh, the argument is made in our subcontinent that we are in developmental mode, so we cannot really pay attention to the environment. It is should be the other way around. We should really care for the environment as much as we do care for the economic development, because without you know environmental you know stewardship and the social inclusion, you know uh, sustainable development is not possible. So I'm using uh, New York City just as a, a reference point for our subcontinent. So uh, New York City has the good air quality, I mean, compared to last year, 58% of the time, I mean, slightly better this year because of the lockdown, slightly better, meaning more than half of the time this year was better. And this is the data uh, for Dhaka City. As you can see, the red lines here are the data from 2019, April, May, and greens are the 2020. And if you look at the side by side, you can see that certain days in 2019 red lines, you know, reach the hazardous level, hazardous meaning more than 300 you know, AQI. So several of the days you can see from this graph, whereas after the pandemic this year, the green lines, they did not quite reach that bad. It has improved visibly and we'll show you this the same data. So 2019, meaning last year, uh, air quality was one, 143 on average, this year 120. So there is a 16% improvement uh, of the air quality due to lockdown. And 70, 68% of the time this year, meaning April and May, air quality was better than uh, air quality in 2019, April and May, 68% of the time and improved by 16%. So let's look at uh, Kolkata. Kolkata is another city uh, that I really like. You know, I consider Kolkata, uh, you know, next to Dhaka in terms of my affiliation that I feel to people of Kolkata and West Bengal. So I looked at it. Uh, so you can see the separation between 2019 and 20 is quite prominent here in Kolkata, meaning that in 20, 2020, air quality has improved quite a bit in Kolkata. And as you can see that uh, last year, average air quality was 98, which is moderate. Uh, by the way, Dhaka was uh, much worse, as you remember, and this year is 71 average, meaning April and May. So it's 27% improvement. And so Kolkata is doing a lot better. It was doing a lot better even before the, before the pandemic, because it never really reached this hazardous and unhealthy uh, air quality standard before even the pandemic. So um, Kolkata uh, showed 73% of the time this year air quality was better than last year. So let's look at the New Delhi. New Delhi, you can see the red lines are quite separated from the green lines, but especially in the middle part of the lockdown and towards the end of May, meaning you know the uh, separation between 2019 and 20 is not as prominent. Maybe people are getting tired or lockdown is not as strictly enforced. So last year, the average for New Delhi was 100, 57, this year 115, quite an improvement of 26% of air quality. And 73% of the time in uh, New Delhi, this year that is, air quality was better compared to air quality last year, April and May. So uh, uh, if I can uh, recap, I will uh, show you uh, uh, the last uh, data is the Lahore for Pakistan. I must mention here, that uh, US Embassy did not record data for Lahore, Pakistan for the month of April in 2019. So I have used only the data for May, month of May, even month of May is not complete, starting May 9th. So Lahore data is not complete, but whatever I have in hand, I try to compare. So I wanted to just mention, so Lahore did quite a bit on improvement as well. Last year, it was 181 average, average that is. And this year, it was, uh, as you can see, uh, 131. They also have an improvement of 27. So I know that I threw a lot of numbers at you at a very short period of time, because I should have taken time to explain these numbers, but because of the time constraint, let me show you the summary, summary graph here that I, I created, summary table. So for Dhaka, I'm going from Dhaka to Kolkata to New Delhi to Lahore. 
Dhaka last year average, monthly average for two months of April and May was 143, which is con considered an unhealthy air quality. And this year it is 120, which is still unhealthy, but there is an improvement of 16%, I mentioned, and 68% of the time, air quality was slightly better than last year uh, uh, during the month of April and May. And I did some statistical analysis with the data just to make sure the data for 2019 and 20 are statistically significant with a 95% confidence. This is from the science standpoint, it's important to do that. So Kolkata, 98 last year, 71 this year, 27% improvement, quite a bit more than Dhaka, as you can see, 16 versus 27. And 73% of the time, uh, air quality was better than same time last year. And New Delhi, 157 last year, this year 115, still unhealthy, uh, like Dhaka, uh, and 26% improvement uh, in the air quality during lockdown. And 80% of the time it sustained that improvement this year. And Lahore, 181, really, really uh, worse uh, last year for uh, among the four, country, the four uh, cities. And this year is 131 and improvement 27% and 84% time they sustain good quality. So on the rightmost column, as you can say, I put question mark for you guys who are watching this uh, presentation. I want you to do the math in your head and make the ranking. Out of the four cities that I've compared, which one should be number one, meaning a good improvement in terms of air quality during the pandemic due to lockdown, and which one is the worst? So I want you to do the ranking one, two, three, four in your head. I'll do that for you in the next slide, but I want you to do the mental exercise. So I have done that objectively. I've used a rubric, meaning like a teacher we do, like if it is this column, who was the worst out of the four? Obviously, in this case, you can see Lahore is worst last year, 181 you know, among the four. So Lahore would get one out of four. And the best would be Kolkata 98. 98 would get four because I have used a scale of one to four because there are four cities. The so four you know, is given to the best and one given to the worst. So let's do that exercise here. As I just mentioned, Kolkata gets four out of four for last year's air quality. Lahore gets one, uh, Delhi gets two, and Dhaka gets three. You get the picture. Using the same concept, I have graded all other parameters. So Kolkata gets four out of four for this year as well. And Lahore gets one, meaning worst, for this year, because 131 is the highest number among these four here. And percentage of improvement, again, Kolkata gets four out of four because they uh, made 27% improvement. So the, did Lahore, although Lahore data is not complete and so on. So based on this uh, uh, grading rubric, final uh, score uh, in the final exam, Kolkata gets 14 out of 16 and Lahore gets 10 out of 16. New Delhi gets 10 out of 16 and Dhaka unfortunately gets seven out of 16 in my objective analysis. So the ranking here is Kolkata is the champion in this. Kolkata is the, uh, you know, did, the, uh, did very good last year and doing very well this year. And second is Lahore and third is uh, New Delhi. And unfortunately, fourth is uh, our beloved Dhaka. So you can say why uh, 10 and 10, the uh, final score for Lahore and New Delhi, both got 10 and 10. Why Lahore second, why New Delhi third? I looked at the, this column because they sustained for a little longer time than uh, New Delhi. And also they made slightly more improvement, uh, meaning Lahore did compared to New Delhi. Uh, so this the amount of improvement and the amount of time that sustained. So this is the uh, kind of like the final uh, presentation. And I looked at it from GIS map standpoint to just to show viewers where is Dhaka, where is Kolkata, where is New Delhi, where is Lahore? So Kolkata is number one, Lahore is number two, New Delhi is number three, Dhaka is number four in terms of air quality during and before the pandemic comparison. And here I'm showing the general air flow for this time of year. You can see air for Dhaka and Kolkata comes from Bay of Bengal. 
it's a nice Dokina Hawa, as you know. So that is really making things a little better. Otherwise, the situation in Dhaka would be even worse, if not from the air flowing from Bay of Bengal. For New Delhi and Lahore, unfortunately, this is uh, the second part of this graph. I'm looking for my cursor. So here, so they have a circular air uh, coming out of Middle East and circling around New Delhi that's making that situation worse. So that is for right now. And Himalaya separates this subcontinent. You can see north of Himalayas, blue meaning good air quality. So north of Himalayas air quality is really good and air is flowing north of Himalayas into China and all this. So air quality makes a big difference. This is for this time of year. Other time of year, air quality flow, uh, I mean, air flow direction will change, obviously. I just wanted to put that thing in perspective. So let's make a few uh, last uh, comments. Uh, statistically, I have shown that Kolkata is the best among the four cities and uh, in terms of last year and this year and also improvement. And the Lahore made some improvement as well, which is higher than New Delhi. So it's the second. And New Delhi is also, oh, just like uh, Lahore, very close, tight, you know, they are tight, in fact. But uh, it is uh, really, uh, I know, third, uh, third most uh, improved city from that perspective. Dhaka, unfortunately, improved the least. And uh, there are a lot of reasons we can discuss it. Maybe when we have the time for discussion, Dhaka uh, did not really declare lockdown per se. They declared what they call uh, you know, uh, national holiday. And holiday in our part of the world, people take as chuti. So you just go around and do your business. So lockdown was not as strict as it was in Kolkata. And beside that, Dhaka has a lot of you know, economic and industrial activities. Dhaka is a booming city from that perspective. There are a lot of uh, uh, you know, uh, big kills near uh, Dhaka and a lot of industrial activities. And I did the Z test, as I mentioned earlier. So conclusion, uh, you know, Dhaka has improved somewhat during the lockdown, but it is not where it should have been. Their improvement is lowest among the four cities in, uh, in the subcontinent. And, uh, and New Delhi did a uh, you know, little bit better than this. And Kolkata is really was very successful, I would say, based on my data in terms of social lockdown. Their air quality was relatively better uh, before the pandemic in the good, you know, moderate quality, and they even improved during the pandemic. So uh, kudos to Kolkata, and that's, uh, you know, that is something that good. I'm looking forward to that good quality air next time I go to Kolkata. I was there even this year. Uh, and New York I used, as you know, as a reference point. That just to show that uh, economic you know, prosperity or activities does not have to compromise the environmental uh, you know, quality. And this is just as a reference. So you know, when uh, our part of the world, our policymakers say that let us develop first, in Bangladesh, they use the word unnoyanet joar. So unnoyanet joar doesn't have to really compromise with the uh, you know, uh, environmental stewardship or uh, protection. So uh, this is uh, my recommendation. When we come back to normalcy, so to speak, after the pandemic is over, you know, this improvement in air quality was unexpected, unintended, as you know. But we need to plan so that we can keep that good air quality even after the pandemic is over. So what are my recommendations? Recommendations are, obviously, we need to implement higher quality of fuel standard, meaning you know, good quality coal, I am actually against the coal. I'm just saying if you do use, you need to have, you know, low amount of sulfur and so on and so forth. And we need to set stricter vehicle and brick field emission standard in our part of the world. And, uh, you know, the vehicles uh, are really old and their standards are not up to, the, up to the mark. And we need to promote the alternative fuels like the solar and wind energy and providing incentives to the non-motorized vehicle like the bike. We need to promote bikes and exhaust, you know, which uh, does not burn the fossil fuel. And we need to invest more in research and development in air pollution reduction and development. So with this, I thank you, thank Belda College uh, for giving me the opportunity. And here is the map showing where Belda College is. And you can see uh, we are here in Borisal and Noakhali across from Belda College. And here's the Sundarbans. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, along that separate line, people should look into, um, you know, uh, reforesting the entire coastal belt, 
near Kakdeep and everywhere else so that we can really protect uh, a city like Kolkata during Amphan and future, uh, uh, future hurricanes. So uh, a lot of historic uh, data shows the extent of Sundarwan is much wider than what we have right now. And uh, so Sundarwan is right now here, as you can see, it was extended all the way to Burishal and probably all the way to Kakdeep. That's a separate uh, question. Let me stop here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, scholarly deliberations. And uh, pro uh, Professor Muhammad Khalikul Zaman beautifully analyzed the, uh, the air quality in Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan before and after the social lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And he used uh, different data uh, to explain them. And he showed that uh, uh, the how the air quality improved due to the social lockdown. Uh, so sir, uh, I have a question that do you think that this uh, uh, environmental pollution, this mindless environmental pollution has any interrelation, direct interrelations with the outburst of COVID-19? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, obviously, the uh, you know, destruction of the habitat, the natural destruction of the habitat, where you know, this is a completely separate philosophical discussion probably, because we need to look into the nature as, uh, as uh, you know, human as a part of the nature, not nature you know, at the disposal of the human. So all the uh, uh, plants and animals that we have on our planet, including the virus and bacteria, we need to respect them, we need to coexist with them. There is a purpose for those, all the animals and all the plants life on our planet. So when we are distracting their habitat, then they have no place to go. So they jump from the, their natural habitat into the animals, then into the human. So I don't know exact uh, ca causal relationship for this particular virus, but uh, they're, they're, this is very evident that we need to change our paradigm in terms of development and in terms of protection of the environment. And uh, global climate change, definitely there are a lot of other research showing that due to the global warming, lot of the viruses and bacteria that were hidden in the tundra area under the glaciers, due to the melting of the glaciers, there are a lot of new viruses are coming out of this, uh, uh, of the ground. And uh, it, uh, unfortunately, this uh, COVID-19 is not going to be the last pandemic. Unfortunately, I think I'm not a biologist. I'm just a geologist. My specialization is water resources and oceanography. So, Unfortunately, I suspect that there will be more of this kind of pandemic because uh, new viruses and bacteria are being released from the due to the global climate change and global warming. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I think there are some questions in the chat box also. So, Sushma, are you there? Sushma. Sushma, are you there? Okay, okay, sir. I am there. Yeah. I am there. I can you hear have, you. Sir. Do you have any questions to uh, your teacher? I think you are the person who have linked uh, <laughs> us with Professor Kalikul Zaman. So if you have any uh, query, you please. Uh, uh, I, have, I have one question for sir. Sir, first time, good morning as per North American uh, schedule. <laughs> good morning to you. I'm looking, you know, sun hasn't come out yet. You know, it's. Okay. <laughs> Looking uh, out sir, my window, and it's still very early morning. Uh, sir, your presentation is very nice and most informative presentation. But, sir, I just, uh, just not the question, just uh, sharing my idea with you uh, that Dhaka, in the city of Dhaka, because a lot of time I, my field area is Dhaka metropolitan city. So I, uh, so I know that in Dhaka city, the traffic problem is huge in Dhaka city. So uh, is it one of the cause for air pollution in Dhaka? Absolutely, absolutely right. Because major sources of air pollution in Dhaka is the uh, vehicle. And then second is the uh, in the brick kilns, Iter Bhata. And hmm. uh, third is the biomass burning, like the hmm. good and all this you know, biomass burning. And fourth hmm. is the construction, massive construction that goes on in Dhaka. Because as I because mentioned during my presentation briefly, Dr. Mm -hmm. uh, Khan is here uh, with us, and he mm -hmm. uh, has been to Dhaka uh, from London, and he mm -hmm. can testify, and Sushoma as well, they go to Dhaka quite often. 
that uh, metro rail construction and lot of construction. Dhaka is a booming city from that perspective. You know, economic uh, activities are there. Uh, so uh, in uh, Russia, construction, uh, construction makes it worse as well. Uh, sir, frequently I was visited in Russia uh, University, but in Russia, the uh, totally is the uh, completely plain Dhaka, um, uh, much less air pollution. Yes, because yes. I'm there familiar is, with that. I'm familiar. Because there, there is no uh, huge traffic jam or traffic problem. But uh, in Dhaka city, the traffic problem is huge. I think uh, it's uh, too much to be in Kolkata also. Yes, yes, but uh, Kolkata is not a comparison to Dhaka. You know, Dhaka, you know, you, you, you heard that expression that they don't want to pay the, you know, auto insurance mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. their, their wheel is not moving. So why they mm -hmm. should pay for auto insurance? <laughs> you know, the car <laughs> wheel does not move. It, it just, it just stays because in the stands on the road. <laughs> there is no possibility for accident. So uh, no uh, car insurance is not necessary in Dhaka. <laughs> yes, yes, that's all right. That's all right. And you mentioned <laughs> Rashrahi. Rashrahi did not mm. did not happen, you know, by incident. Rashrahi took a lot of measures uh, mm. to protect their uh, pro protect their environment. The mm. city of Rashrahi has taken a lot of measures in terms of plantation and in mm. terms of you know removing the darts. You know, mm. they they dig the darts from the drain and just put next to the uh, drain in our part of the world. And mm. Rashrahi has taken to remove those darts because when the darts dry off. The, all the all the dust from those darts start to fly in the air. That's mm. another source of air pollution. And Russia has taken some measure. I think mm. we can learn from them. And also the same position, uh, almost uh, Pabna, also Pabna. I never been to Pabna myself. You have mm. been to Pabna, so I cannot really tell. Mm. And Pabna is a small city. There is no comparison to Dhaka. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Khan, I see you are raising hand. With permission Dr. Khan, of uh, welcome, uh, welcome, our, our welcome. chair, obviously, yes, yes, uh, yes. Dr. Yes. Mukherjee. And Dr. Khan. With the uh, permission of the chair, um, first of all, it's uh, lovely to see you, um, uh, Professor Kali Kuzaman. And this is the good work of Shushma. She connected the three of us. And indeed, uh, also, I'm now connected with Dhaka University. Professor Mukaddam was there. And yes, yes. Dr. Mukaddam, I saw his presentation yesterday. Yes. So I, I join uh, uh, your presentation is excellent, uh, scholarly, as Professor Mukherjee said. Um, uh, very useful, very interesting. I have a question, but I have a few observations that I will make. You are very right that construction is the cause of uh, a lot of pollution in, in Bangladesh, particularly around Dhaka. Uh, you'll be happy to know, I have lived there continuously for 33 years in Bangladesh. 30 years, I didn't know. I, I came there in 1987. The longest I have been away has been in this lockdown. I was repatriated to UK on the 3rd of May. So this is the longest I've been away from Dhaka at a time. I see. So uh, I have grown up with Dhaka and uh, I am sad that we are still at the bottom, but it doesn't, it's not surprising. Uh, on positive side, they are going to ban the manufacture of bricks, kiln bricks. They are going to be replaced by blocks, which are polluting, but not as polluting as the, uh, the bricks. Particularly, they show coal, but they actually use wood, which mm -hmm. is even worse. I mean, yes. normally, just for law enforcing agency, they will have a heap of coal. But if you go deep down, <laughs> it's actually wood they use. So deforestation and the higher pollution from wood is, is, is a factor. The other factor is, as you mentioned, um, is... Uh, very old vehicles. Yes. Hello? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes, yes. Uh, very old vehicles. I mean, you have got Second World War trucks still flying, particularly in Chittagong, you know, the, the ones that the, the Americans landed. They are still running. And I was thinking that in the West, we are scrapping um, petrol and diesel vehicles. They are much younger. Could the government not do a scheme, say, to the developing countries, you send these vehicles to us 
and we make an offer to people in Bangladesh who have old buses and trucks, we will you scrap those and we will give you as a replacement um, more um, uh, you know newer vehicles, which which could be one solution. That's a that's a that's a proposal you know you can make to the government and see what they have to say. Well, I can make that, but I also know the bureaucracy there. It's not going to, it's just I'm sharing it with, I'm frustrated that something simple like that, where it's yes, a win-win yes. thing, nobody can lose. So Absolutely. that is one. And the other, observe, other um, thing I was going to say is that uh, recently we looked at the British Council, they had problem, the concrete was falling down. The effect of uh, pollution is not only uh, in terms of human health and uh, uh, other things, but it's very damaging for infrastructure because the, the rate of carbonation is very high when the carbon dioxide is high in the air. Combined with high temperature and humidity, the, the rate of carbonation can be 10 times what you have in, um, in, in the USA. So, this high pollution is very damaging also for infrastructure. And my question to you is, um, I'm conscious I would have loved more interaction, but um, how much is it to do with, I had heard that, um, that in Bangladesh we import diesel, which is about has got 10 times the limit, safe limit of sulfur that is allowed here in UK. Is that uh, one of the, the, the bigger factors in this high pollution? Yes, it is, uh, it, is a, it is a problem, but that wouldn't be uh, directly a problem for uh, particulate matters, for example. Sulfur dioxide would be the problem, and sulfur dioxide has a bearing on the acid rain and many other, many other uh, parameters, because sulfur dioxide is also responsible for ozone, for example. And, and uh, so, so that's a separate issue, but you are right. Bangladesh, in one of the recommendations, uh, if you remember, I mentioned to, we need to in, in, increase the standard of the fuel that we use because uh, there is no standard for uh, you know, sulfur and uh, in, in, in the crude oil that the Bangladesh uses. So yes, there are a lot of deeper issues, of course. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. And uh, I, do, I can't entertain any more questions because our, we're running short of time. Yes, yes. So I, I invite the next speaker, Professor Makosturi Sinha Ghosh, uh, who is assistant professor in, uh, uh, from Department of Social Work, Netaji Subhas uh, Open University. So uh, ma'am, Professor Kosturi Sinha Ghosh, kindly join the uh, meeting and speak. Professor Kosturi Sinha Ghosh, can you hear me? Madam, Madam, are you there? Okay, okay, Madam is there. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. And I, I'm a little scared to present, because, you know, just after Sir, because it was such a nice presentation. Uh, so let me see and let me try how I, uh, you know, put together all my research uh, work that I have been able to do. Uh, my work is basically, uh, I mean, the, the topic on which I'm going to speak today is um, on um, understanding the secondary impact of COVID-19 on the rural women of Bengal, particularly in the uh, Tehotto block of Nodia district. And uh, my work is basically a qualitative research. Uh, I have tried to take, I have taken two cases uh, uh, from, uh, from Tehotto block. And this was basically, uh, you know, I've taken up uh, with the, I mean, I've taken, I've used uh, video conferencing for taking up the uh, cases because as you know, it is not possible uh, to directly go to the field, but I have used the technology to, uh, to collect my, uh, you know, uh, to, to go for this research. Uh, so now uh, the background, uh, which I would like to share is like, uh, you know, the world today is, uh, as we all know, is facing a huge, uh, you know, a very uh, a crisis situation due to the spread of uh, this rapid spread of COVID-19 since December 19, uh, December 19. And the World Health Organization, who has already declared the disease to be the uh, global pandemic in March uh, 2000, I mean, in 11th March 2000, uh, 2020. Uh, 
as far as the prevention, government has announced lockdowns, series of lockdowns. This is probably the fifth lockdown. Um, and uh, the zones have been divided into red, orange, green, according to the uh, you know, uh, incidence of the diseases. Uh, people are advised to maintain distance. They are advised to wash their hands, uh, you know, sanitize themselves, maintain health and hygiene. Now, uh, my paper uh, would, would like to look into the effect, um, the social impact, basically, of COVID-19 on the women folk of our rural communities, uh, particularly, as I said, in Nadia district, of the Hatta block of Nadia district, West Bengal. And I would also like to uh, prescribe some uh, strategies to cope up uh, with this situation. And of, of, of course, like being a social, I mean, a, I'm an, 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 a, a person from social work discipline, I would be uh, suggesting uh, uh, remedy, I mean, uh, my prescriptions would be basically as a social worker. Uh, so the, my study would try to analyze the various ways through which women of our society, particularly, as I said, uh, in the rural areas are becoming easy victim of the secondary impact of the coronavirus, if not the coronavirus itself, but uh, how they are being affected by the secondary impact of the virus, COVID-19. Um, uh, well, while uh, examining these, uh, these impacts, um, we should try to consider both uh, I mean, how women, both in the public as well as in the private spheres, are uh, getting uh, affected due to COVID-19, both in private and public sphere. Uh, well, uh, these gender, uh, I mean, these uh, secondary impacts uh, have really been, had a very deeper uh, socio-political implications. And uh, at times, the policymakers often you know, skip this or they fail to notice this and they I mean, fail to bring this into their, I mean, into their frame of action. Um, and women, uh, particularly of the rural area, the rural belt are not really vocal about their problems. They don't talk about their problems. They don't share about their problems. As a result of which much of their problems remain unheard or unsolved, unresolved. So, uh, to begin with, let us first analyze the, uh, you know, basic general, uh, a general outline, or let us give a general outline of the lifestyle of the rural Bengal, or women of the rural Bengal, or uh, as such uh, of any, any, uh, you know, rural areas. So uh, she is the one who is basically not much in, not not much into, uh, you know. Uh, some job or she's not doing much of the job maybe she's going to the field uh, with her husband supporting her husband in the fields or doing some uh, you know contributing some uh, in some maybe in some uh, small scale industries or something like that and she's generally she's confined within the four wall uh, responsible um, she's responsible of cooking gathering water you know bringing water for the household and uh, taking care of the ch of the children of the elderly, looking at the household activities, uh, she has to collect water. Remember, from a distant, uh, you know, place. And right now, and this in this situation also, she has to travel a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, hello, hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? I think there is I a think problem. Ma'am, yes. Ma'am got disconnected suddenly. They are of the view yes. that uh, oh, it's again connected. Out okay, okay. Of the five important, five main, uh, you know, uh, states of India who are who, who have contributed to about forty six percent of national coronavirus case, one of them is Bengal. So um, mm. the five being uh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, 
Madhya Pradesh, Bengal, and and also Bengal is one of the uh, state which has high coronavirus cases. Uh, unfortunately, further the report also reflects that these states are also facing a peculiar problem, a peculiar problem of water, uh, you know, a poor water accessibility, particularly drinking water uh, supply is very uh, poor. Uh, and as a result of which maintaining health and hygiene at this point of time, when uh, you have to maintain, uh, you know, uh, good uh, self hygiene and hygiene of the rest of the family has to be maintained, washing has to be done, hand washing has to be done, a lot of water is spent. So this is the problem. And uh, another problem is that the sanitation. Most of the houses in the rural areas of Bengal, since they have a puja area, a area where they have a, you know, uh, for worshipping, so they are Still not. I mean, though there are so many schemes, government schemes and pol uh, programs, uh, total sanitation program is there, Sachi Bharat, every, these programs are there, but they are still not, uh, you know, uh, Hello, they still don't have toilets within their premises, uh, within their house. They have it somewhere outside. Now, so this is another thing. So now women, she is the one who has to travel. Hello, around one point, please, I mean, please. at please. times it's so that they have to cover a distance of around 1.5 kilometers to fetch water. Now, speaking. who will, I mean, I mean, then we can understand, are they actually, is it maintained? This is a big question. Uh, when are going to hello, Kasturi, water, madam. They want to come back home. This hello. One, something is going at the back of their mind, and I have to come back. Home. You can't hear us. So they're, you know, yeah, rushing exactly. to get the water. And then, exactly. Uh, so madam, then can, can you hear us? As soon as possible. Madam, can so you hear us? Then the, where, where is this question of social maintaining there? Where's I the think there is some technical of, issue. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. how, how, how is she managing? Uh, uh, speaking and we are uh, unable, uh, she is unable to hear us. Family. Do we what have her contact number? So uh, Shushama, Shushama, are you there? Uh, really have uh, I mean, you know, go to the village. So, uh, I mean, we have a lot of facilities, but think of these people who don't have a who have the, who have to travel such a long, satisfying the need of their family. This is one thing. Uh, another point that uh, I would like to raise here is COVID 19 has also been a uh, a, a reason of uh, because of which women of particularly of our. Uh, you know, we can contact him via mobile, I think, so that will be better. Facing a tremendous physical and mental torture within their household. So the domestic violence is yeah, yeah. I, now, think, I think it is very difficult what is uh, for us to hear what is this uh, due People to technical reasons. Within the household, we are unable to hear her presentation, home, and uh, there. she is also unable, unable to, to hear us. Nobody is going for work. So now, this poor lady, she that, has to yeah. satisfy, okay. you know, she has to cook. And another thing is that. Vegetables are not there, but still, food is not there. She does. She cannot within the limited resources. She has to cook the best food and, you know, place it, uh, place the plate in front of her. Uh, should family. I should I give and her a call is, on phone? Family is not. Uh, I think that would be better. That would be that better. Is, and, oh, okay, okay. Uh, I think I think what uh, I think I will request uh, Chandra to uh, take up a few questions because if participants have any query. Food is uh, one will, uh, in that can be so can many other issues. Uh, speed up the process. To, uh, you know, then uh, 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 I think we have to uh, mute uh, her. I think you have to mute, madam. Some kind of uh, uh, some some something which uh, she's not. I mean, that is something which is not acceptable. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I'll give her a call. I'll give her a call. Poor lady, she is victimized. I'll give her a call. So, so she can hear me. So, madam. You know, uh, what happens no, now? No, no. This domestic violence is one, one another case which is uh, I'm really giving her a call. Lipika, I'm family. giving her a call. Yeah, she's uh, so she's uh, undergoing a tremendous mental pressure. Uh, 
Now, uh, the, the sexual and reproductive. Yes, I think she's muted. Huh? Yes, yeah. yes, she's muted and her phone is uh, busy. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. I think Shushama is talking. Uh, is, uh, okay, okay. I'm extremely, when we are extremely sorry to interrupt her yes. in this way. In this way, definitely. No, no, because she was not visible and not audible also. So okay, okay. it was not fruitful. I don't I think there is any question because we cannot entertain any question because uh, Madam Ma'am is not in the, not with us in the platform. So um, I request uh, the coordinators to proceed to the next session. That would be better, I think. Yes, because yes. There's nobody to answer the questions. If anybody has any question, I'm very sorry for that because uh, she ma'am is not in the platform. So I request the coordinators and I thank uh, Dr. Mohammed. Um, <coughs> Uh, 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 and uh, both Professor Kasturi Sinaghos uh, for the beautiful presentation and uh, I thank all the participants once again and I hand over to the coordinators for the next proceedings. Uh, okay, uh, it was uh, really very unfortunate that we uh, couldn't hear uh, Madam Kasturi Sinaghos properly. Uh, but uh, we do have a suggestion. Uh, if she rejoins, then we can we will entertain mm -hmm. after the next speaker. We will entertain. Uh, we question. will hear from her. We will entertain the question definitely validatory after session. this. Yeah, after during the validatory session, we will definitely. Hello. So, so with this, uh, Yes. Sushma, are you there? <coughs> okay. Yeah, ma'am. Go for Okay, I'm there. Hmm. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Hmm. Can you hear me? Lipika, ma'am, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Shishma? Yes, you're audible, audible, madam. Yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, if Kasturi, madam, is there, then I, I just want to make a point that, madam, due to technical reasons, we initially, uh, we could hear you, but later on, we couldn't hear you properly. So, uh, so and we... Uh, Actually, uh, it was a long uh, break, I think. For five minutes, we couldn't uh, hear you properly also. But uh, but we will try to reconnect with you very soon. And uh, there are questions. We will definitely entertain those questions during uh, after a few uh, minutes. But uh, we have with us a very eminent speaker, uh, uh, Professor Tuhin Ghosh. Uh, actually, so uh, I think we can move on to the validity today with the uh, permission of the organizing secretary and IQVC director, Dr. Panda, shall we move on? And then later we will entertain the questions of uh, definitely, Madam definitely. Kasturi. Okay. Go for okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, so before we get into our formal validatory session, uh, I just want to thank uh, Professor Mohammed Khaliku Zaman uh, for giving us his precious time. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, you have been with us uh, in the early hour uh, at your place. So thank you so much. I thank Dr. Kasturi, Madam, uh, again for her presentation. But uh, but uh, I can just tell that it is a pending. We will definitely entertain questions from the participants on your presentation. And I especially thank our chair, Dr. Uh, Jayanta Mukherjee. Uh, so he has managed the session very, very efficiently. Thank you so much. I thank Shushama also for being with us. And uh, now, uh, straightway, before uh, uh, going to valedictory, I want to tell everyone that you can uh, share, everyone can share the YouTube link with your friends and colleagues and students because, because Dr. Tuhin Ghosh is a very eminent environmentalist and he is currently the director of the School of Oceanographic Studies, Jadapur University. He is with all of us and he will be speaking on the topic impact of multiple disaster covid-19 and cyclone ampun on indian sundarban delta and uh, i hand over now this session to dr lipika mondul madam can you please kindly introduce dr tuhin ghosh and formally uh, carry on the session thank you sritama dr ghosh tuhin babu join korechen ha uni join korechen sanditas ha ha join korechen Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Uh, I cannot hear actually. 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I really extend a hearty welcome to our esteemed guest, Dr. Tuhin Ghosh, who spread time from his busiest schedule to grace our occasion, EcoExist 2020. <laughs> we have opportunity to hear uh, <coughs> your thoughts and thinkings. Dr. Professor Tuhin Ghosh, <coughs> is a professor and director of School of Oceanographic Studies, Jadapur University, India. He has a more than two decades research ex experience in coastal geomorphology, disaster management, climate changes, change impacts, adaptation strategies, and human migration. He is a lead author of the IPCC special report on the ocean and cryosphere in a changing climate in the chapter four, that is sea level rise and implications for low-lying islands and coasts and communities. He has several publications and books of his credit. Tuhin Ghosh was India lead international research uh, consortium like NERC, UK funded ESPA Delta, uh, Belmont Forum Deltas project and IDRC, DFID funded DCCMA project and currently in a UKRI G, uh, GCRF Living Deltas Hub. So, sir, sir, yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks to the sir, organizers uh, for inviting. Please, I cannot hear you properly. I, I think the bandwidth is low. And I will prefer to uh, keep the video off so that the bandwidth will be a little bit better. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks to the organizers for uh, inviting me in this uh, Coexist 2020. And this is really a timely uh, conference or workshop or meet, whatever you say. Uh, this is really timely. And in between, there is AMFAN on 20th of uh, May. So uh, I, I will try to come up with some kind of uh, essence uh, when one disaster is ongoing, another disaster came. So what are the combined effect and what are the gaps in the governance and uh, preparation, all these things? So very shortly, I will not take much time. I think everybody is listening since morning and people are really tired. So if we just uh, recollect, uh, the March 22nd was the curfew, and on the March 24th, uh, the lockdown announced in India. So if we look back to the people there, few people were trapped within the state, within the district somewhere, and uh, very large population, the migrant laborers, they became trapped outside the uh, state. So what are the problems with this kind of lockdown? And especially I will, I will try to concentrate on Sundarban. That is basically my study area uh, since long I am working there. So if we look back to the uh, people that delta. Uh, sector wise, we can think about uh, some specific sectors, if we call it, say the transport and communication sector. Just for example, few examples I will try to uh, cite. Say for communication, we, we are very much dependent on mobile phones. So we need to recharge the mobile phones and internet services. And if, okay, I'll start the video, but I don't know how much it will be beneficial. Anyway, so if, if we think about the mobile research and internet research, the shops need to be open. And during lockdown, the shops were not open, okay. So people were not able to recharge their mobile phones or internet services. 
and long time there is no income so the money is not in their in their hand that is also happened regarding the transport sector every kind of transport was locked down any kind of public transport private transport everything so the sector transport and communication there was some problem markets if we talk about markets the markets were mostly uh, closed the shops big shops except the grocery and other shops and the markets were very much restricted initially afterwards we have seen that there is no restriction that's true so there was some marketing chain or market supply chain disruption we have observed and people were used to come to uh, the market from distant places could not really uh, commute so there was local people who were uh, engaged in other occupation they tried to come up with that kind of new occupation so that happened also if we look at the drinking water in the delta especially the drinking water supply was more or less okay but as the people are always within their home the consumption increased so people has to go to the supply point very frequently and there is a specific uh, gender role is there as uh, kosturi ma'am was trying to uh, elaborate that the women in the family they were mostly uh, going frequently to bring the drinking water the education sector was totally shut down much before the lockdown i think it's the uh, 10th 10th of march or something like that so the government decided to come up with some online classes but if you think about the even today's internet service as we are experiencing uh, kosturi ma'am could not finish her uh, presentation so if you think about that kind of internet service is that possible especially in the rural area to attend the online classes even for the teachers to conduct the online classes it's not possible and some television uh, channels they started some kind of uh, classes on screen on the media but when people are not having much money they could not actually come up with that kind of recharge of their cable network so it's happened it happened and also it happened that uh, there is the possibility of digital disparity so from our university our vice chancellor he requested to look up to that kind of thing whether there is any kind of digital disparity so we we from our department especially we decided to uh, deliver some kind of materials and assignments not actually hosted uh, any kind of online classes so it happened and the fuel sector if we look back the fuel supply was a little bit limited in the remote areas and people are not having money they cannot really buy the lpg cylinders and other things because there is a huge uh, level of loss of income so it happened in the health sector if you think about the transport and communication is not there then the health emergencies or medical emergencies uh, it was disrupted really so during emergency the people could not move they could not communicate and also for the doctors and health support staffs they could not move properly from their residence to the their uh, hospital or health center so it happened so there was some kind of disruption we, we found in in the uh, health sector also and if we think about the local governance or the administration in the rural areas we found that the local panchayat elected body in the villages they tried to aver people they tried to restrict people they tried to come up with some solutions in the market with some marking for social distancing all these things and there are a lot of police uh, in at least in the beginning of the lockdown they were trying to monitor the things 
but all these disruptions actually impacted the livelihood of the people if we go sector by sector the agriculture sector there was no such impact at that time but whenever they were talking about the future impact there is some possibility of market chains applying so the marketing of their produce might be hampered and they will not get proper price of their produce so it's happening actually i i i was in delta for twice uh, in, in, during this lockdown and after amphan especially and tomorrow i will again uh, visit the delta for 5 6 days so it's happening they are not getting a uh, proper price for their produce in the agriculture sector especially in the paddy and the vegetables they cannot really sell because they have to consume and there is no market and the market the, the buyer is less for the river and fishing the buyer is less so the fishermen they are actually going to the river very infrequently and coming up with some small catch because they cannot sell within that three hours uh, the market is being hosted in some remote areas or some playgrounds for social distancing and they are not eager to catch much because there is no refrigeration system so they have to catch small amount and sell it quickly within three hours so it happened and in the other sectors in uh, in the delta there are some specific things that uh, honey collection and box b bee, uh, bee keeping and also crab collection all these things so this year there was no permit given by the forest department to the honey collectors but still some people uh, went inside the forest illegally and so far uh, three persons killed by tiger so as per i know uh, two persons from the shatchali island and one person from the mollakali island and uh, also in the crab collection the export of crab is lucrative one but the export stopped so the grade crab which is uh, being sold earlier time 800 rupees per kg uh, is now only 100 rupees per kg and there is a huge risk to collect crab uh, inside the forest uh, because of the tiger attack so uh, just on saturday there is one tiger attack uh, from kultuli area one person killed by the tiger so for, for crab collection and if we think about the livestock and poultry there is no such demand because the market actually shrink and there is no buyer so much so the poultry and livestock producers are not in, in a good position and the migrants if we talk about them the migrants who could come up uh, return in the in their residence before the lockdown or initial time of lockdown they actually lost job and they are actually just trying to come up or leave with their savings and the migrants were intended to go out who were earlier came to their residence and book the reserved the train tickets for going to bangalore or maharashtra or somewhere there uh, they actually trapped here so it happened so the money circulation within the market within the rural market local market is is very very limited and there is some fish farming tourism as alternate Uh, livelihood we have seen in the delta and the fish farming stopped the tourism there is no transport there is no communication there is everything stopped so tourism was not possible but from from uh, yesterday i think uh, the tourism started uh, as per the government order but still the tourism is not going to flourish because people are not ready to go in the sundarban area though people love to go uh because of that kind of uh contamination uh, fear of contamination and all these things and uh, even the local people uh, wherever there are some tourist resort uh, local people are resisting uh, to uh, through the uh, panchayat that no one should 
come to this uh, tourist resorts because we are scared about the people from city. So it's happening, though tomorrow I will go and I don't know what kind of treatment I will get still. Uh, but last two times I, I stayed in the boat, so it was easier for me. Anyway, so uh, that was the livelihood and the disruptions due to the COVID. And so there was some uh, disaster as there was some disruption. So the normal livelihood was not there. And if we think about this kind of disruption in the rural and urban landscape, say we are in the city or big towns, what we were doing actually? we were trapped within two or three boxes and we could not really go out. So it happened to us and our mental health was going down day by day. But in the rural landscape, a lot of people, I used to communicate with the people there, they told us, told me that uh, they are quite okay because they can roam around, they can have fresh air, and they can interact with uh, their neighbors and all other uh, people in their uh, hamlet. But in the urban landscape, we really cannot, though there are some uh, problem with uh, maintaining all these things. Uh, some of our friends, they did not maintain really. So there is some difference in the rural and urban landscape also. And then under this condition, Amphan came. And if you think in the April, at the end of April, 29th April, there was some warning that there is some low pressure formed that is called Amphan or Umphan, whatever. And it might landfall on 1st or 2nd of May. It did not happen actually. It stopped near Myanmar and it actually gained much more energy than that time of estimation. So what I am intended to say that we got a lot of time, not really four or five days warning as usual cyclone we get. We actually got at least 20, 20 days uh, uh, warning. So then it stopped and then it came nearer to land. It actually went towards the Western side so that time people were thinking that it might landfall in the Tamil Nadu or the uh, part of Orisha and Andhra Pradesh. And then it turned towards uh, northern side and gained more and more energy. So finally, the landfall was on 20th. But if we think about the disaster, the Ampan disaster was mostly in the Western sector of our Delta. And in the Western part or Western bank of the river Hooghly, the lower course of Ganges impacted more and more. But nobody is talking about the Purbo Medinipur district. We have, we have prepared some inundation map and we found that there was severe inundation happened. Lots of embankments breached. But in the uh, right bank or Eastern bank of Hooghly river, it actually did not landfall in Sagar. So the landfall was near uh, Namkhana Island, uh, the place called as North uh, Chandon Piri. It actually did the landfall. And that's why the Pathor Pratima area impacted much more. And if you compare the wind speed and the low, low tide condition, the embankment breaching was much less. So including the latter part of uh, embankment breaching uh, consequent days, it was only around 70 kilometers. But if you compare with Isla, it was more than 1,000 kilometers. In 2009, it happened because that time it was a uh, high tide condition. So there was immense water pressure on the embankments and the inundation was widespread. In this case, the inundation was in some pocket areas but especially Pathar Pratima area impacted much. And in the Northern part, Hingal Ganj, uh, Minakha, Harwa, and Shandeshkali one and two, it was impacted much. And as our Bangladesh trains are there, uh, I, I'm really uh, a little bit surprised 
that in Bangladesh, at least 752, I got one UN uh, report recently, 752 unions uh, flooded from minor to major scale. So I, I little bit, uh, I'm a little bit surprised to see that. So I think we need to think about all this, the strength of the amendments there. Because uh, we know that in our Hingol Ganj area and Minakha, uh, Sandeshkali area, they are a little bit hinterland area. So people are a little bit reluctant about constructing strong embankments. And that's why it happened there. And in the Goshaba area, some places like uh, Uttar Rangabelia, that is the uh, north of Rangabelia, and Kalidashpur, Monmotonagor, uh, some part of um, Shombunagor. It, there was some inundation and also in part of Kumimari. Uh, last uh, Sunday, I was in Kumimari for the whole day. And I saw there was small stretches of embankment breaching. So the, the water-related impact uh, is really less compared to Isla. And, but the wind-related impact, high wind-related impact, is really high in comparison to Isla. And there is some physical damage, infrastructure damage, all these things, especially in the housing, uh, it happened. So a lot of people are rushing towards those areas uh, for uh, providing some relief. And in the last Sunday, I have seen at least uh, 80 uh, boards providing uh, reliefs. But in the relief strategy, what I found that the nearby areas are getting much more relief and the remote areas are not really. So it's, it's very, very peculiar that people from Kolkata or some other places, they are rushing towards the JT, the last point in the mainland, and they are very eager to uh, provide the relief very quickly in the nearby region, and then come back uh, with some banners, and some photographs, some selfie, and all these things. And OK, we have done. A great job kind of thing but there must be some role of administration because administration has the actual database with them where what kind of people are living and how many so if you think about the population and some parameters like kacha house road network embankment breaching all these parameters you can easily indicate the people or you can instruct the people or you can manage the relief distribution properly and you can say uh, some groups that you should go to Kalidaspur. You should not repeat there. You should go to mm. other places in Rangabelia, or you, someone should go in Kumirmari because Kumirmari was initially not getting uh, much relief. So we tried to convince people, uh, some some friends of uh, from Tata Steel organization uh, in the Sunday. They provided huge relief in Kumirmari, and people are really happy now. So this kind of governance, this kind of things that they should be there. And what I intended to say that while this kind of uh, disaster is going on, this COVID, another disaster is coming. The preparation, the planning should be at least four times more than the usual time. It should have been. But there is strong underestimation because you think about the uh, initial uh, wind speed of Amphan, it was category five. It was around 250. And what we experienced? 155 to 165 in the coastal area. And in Kolkata, we experienced around 114, though the news channels are showing that 112, whatever. So it happened. So if 250 is the initial warning, what about our preparation? What about our management plan. And I became really surprised that in the disaster management, there are some terminologies. And no one, really no one, could utter those terminologies. If you think about that, we have opened one control room. There is no terminology in disaster management as control room. There is emergency operation center, EOC. We are prepared, not prepared. We have prepared, we are prepared with incident response system, IRS. That is the terminology. And all the incident facilities, staging ground, all these staging area, these are the terminologies, but no one uttered. 
and we have not seen any disaster management authority person is talking to the media because the disaster management uh, authority the department of disaster management should be the nodal nodal department they have to coordinate all these things because they have the expertise in this field and this disaster management department should come up with some r and d and they have to tell the irrigation department that these are the areas of very very weak embankments you have to concentrate here they have to tell the department of rural development that these are the areas where people are living in the kacha house you have to think about them so all these things they need to coordinate with the line departments but there is lack of coordination and nowhere i have seen any kind of bulletin if you go to the website of the disaster management department that was in the 2019 some recruitment uh, page was there nothing is there but you go to the orissa disaster management department website you will get every day you will get something okay and if you think about orissa when i was talking about orissa the super cyclone in 1999 was havoc and their learning curve is going up and up they learned a lot from that and they actually could manage properly the filing hudud funny all these things and one of my student is there with their department and he is telling that there is a lot of activities going on every day so if we cannot learn from the people properly if we cannot follow the uh, people even our neighboring state we are in the backward situation so that is happening and i will not i will not really uh, lengthen all these things and one thing i should say uh, another thing that whenever we are talking about multiple disasters the one disaster is covid it's for last mm -hmm. almost 3 months lockdown situation and the ampan after two and a half month it happened but you think about the media the people how they are actually looking at it people were not thinking about any relief during covid lockdown they did not consider this covid lockdown as a disaster you think about the people in the rural areas the daily laborers they are not getting any income they are not getting any money how they will survive people did not think about this but in the rural areas there are some positives because they have some food grains in their house or they can grow some vegetable in their home state and somehow and in the pond there is some fish somehow they can survive you think about the city uh, laborers how they will survive they have to buy everything like us so people did not think about any relief during lockdown to the poorer people but the amfan happened then people jumped on all this relief work and they tried to go to the delta because this is the opportunity i would say very crudely this is the opportunity for some people to go out during this lockdown situation okay it's a kind of i was telling people that this is kind of relief tourism i saw a lot of groups they are not maintaining any kind of social distancing they are having the common cigarettes sharing each other okay <clears throat> and they are they are actually enjoying the relief operation so the relief work is for one hour and after that they were enjoying near the river bank and other places for 3 hours 4 hours with all sorts of amusements and they are coming back so is this kind of tourism is there so i saw at least 60 70% relief teams they are doing the same thing not really serious so during corona during lockdown there was no relief but after amfan there is relief and another thing i should mention that we are talking about talking much in the media especially about the kolkata because kolkata never experienced this kind of storm 
hundred plus. Okay, and there was some disruption in Kolkata, but what kind of disruption? The trees were uprooted, the electric poles were uprooted, and there was some communication problem. But that was beneficial for us because that was the lockdown period. So there was less transport on the road, less people on the road. So it should not take seven days, eight days, nine days to clear the things. You think about Maharashtra, how they manage the Nisharbo. Okay, you just go to the website and you, you will see, and there are a lot of bulletins they have published, do documented with the people, do's and don'ts, and all these things. Okay, so it happened. It happened, there was some underestimation. And due to Corona, there was lack of preparation for Amphan. Due to Amphan, there is lack in the social distancing and restriction in uh, Corona. Okay. So egg and chicken situation is going on. But everything is not good. You know very well, uh, better than me, I think. But uh, what I was intended to say that the media was talking about Kolkata, the disruption in Kolkata. Media was talking about the Sundarban area. And they are highlighting so many things, but it did not really happen. If, if uh, I say that uh, in the scale of Isla, it's around 30%, so the impact, okay. But uh, people will not uh, be very happy to see, uh, hear all these things, but nobody is talking about the peri-urban areas. Nobody is talking about the Barakpur area. Nobody is talking about the Piali area, Canning area, all the peri-urban areas surrounding the city, nobody is talking about. Either media is on the city or in the coast in between areas are in dark anyway so all these experiences uh, i have tried to put together as a jigsaw puzzle things uh, i'm not very sure whether it actually uh, provided you some information or not but anyway i'm again i'm thankful to the organizers for inviting me in coexist 2020 and thank you all for uh, listening with your all patience at the end of the program. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much uh, for you were representing a ground, a real picture of the of this pandemic situation and the post cyclonic situation also. Uh, we are very much thankful, sir. You were with us in our validatory session. There are uh, one, one question, not only question, uh, we have asked Dr. Mohammad Khalekuz Zaman from uh, Lockhaven University, Pennsylvania. Uh, sir. Hmm. Uh, sir is there. Can we connect, sir? Can we connect, sir? So I can ask directly. Sure, sure, no problem. Sir is here. Okay. Professor Khalekuz Zaman is here, so he can oh, ask. No, yes, yes. Zaman, no, I just, okay. Okay. I just put a comment there. I just mentioned that Dr. Ghosh, uh, you know, uh, did a very good presentation in terms of laying out the facts on the ground, the ground mm -hmm. reality. I was listening very carefully because uh, it was like, uh, you know, he covered all aspects of life in Sundarbans and all this. So I just mentioned on my comments that since I'm also a coastal geologist like he is, and I have a lot of similar interest in terms of uh, the Delta. So I do have, uh, you know, similar uh, research interests. So I was just saying that I would like to uh, get connected to uh, Dr. Ghosh sometime in the future. So that's, that sure. was my uh, comment there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thank you sir. <coughs> sir, uh, one thing, uh, many more students are watching uh, you in our YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. they have question, mm -hmm. how Amphun likely be different from Isla or Fani and Bulbul? As we have seen that the, this disaster, Amphun, is uh, affecting many more areas along with the Ganga Delta. Sir. So the difference initially is within the, in the speed of the 
uh, wind, wind speed is there. So it's a, in different category, basically. Uh, finally, it came up around category three kind of uh, cyclone, though it formed like category five. But uh, the bulbul and funny is a little bit different because it came oblique way. So it's not like north-south. Okay. Uh, so the impacting uh, capability was within a specific zone. But in Isla, if you think about the track of Isla, it came from south and went up to the north. And it actually ended up in the foothill of Himalaya. So in Shillong, in our Darjeeling, North Bengal, it impacted. But in this case, it went a little bit oblique from northwest towards uh, uh, southwest to northeast, basically, a little bit oblique. And when, when it uh, entered in Bangladesh, it actually lost all, all of its energy. It was only 30 to 35 kilometers per hour. So the, it depends, actually. We cannot really differentiate the cyclones, but we can differentiate uh, from their wind speed and especially the damaging capability and what we have observed after the uh, cyclone happened, all these things. Uh, but the, it dip, the depression is there. And if you think about the zone of formation, if it is towards uh, east, more east, it generally come towards our delta. But if it is a little bit westward, it generally go towards the Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, and uh, Andhra Odisha border area, especially Gopalpur area. So it depends where it is formed, the formation is being, and how it is moving. And if you think about the, <coughs> especially in the, in the case of Amphan, uh, it came towards land, and before landfall, it stopped and it was oscillating east to west. So that time it was gaining more energy because it was uh, capturing more moisture. And then it started moving, then start, then actually uh, a little bit deviation from the predicted path we have observed. So it depends. Uh, we cannot really um, compare all the cyclones according to their uh, character. Thank you. I uh, do have a comment or a in a quick query to Dr. Ghosh, you know, uh, I'm I I never visited the Sundaran part of West Bengal, you but uh, looking at sir. the maps, yeah, looking at the maps, looks mm -hmm. like that the extent of the Sundarbans used to be further to the west, all the way to the Kakdeep. Do you have any research like the you know coring and looking for the peat deposit in the in the western part of the Sundarbans where Sundarban actually ends? Because some historical data shows both in Bangladesh and West Bengal. The extent of the Sundarbans was much larger during the British yeah. period in 18th century. They started cutting down the forest for agriculture. So since you are a coastal geomorphologist, so that's why even my last slide, I don't know whether you are there to see, I showed the picture of Sundarbans and mentioned that how Sundarbans used to be much wider and larger. So do you have any research or, or someone else has any research? And I would like to- yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of research actually done by Argo Height and uh, some people from uh, UCL and other places. Uh, also, I think you know very well, uh, Shahidul Islam is there. Yes, yes. Uh, he I has done some work also. So uh, we have done some work and what we found, we could not do deep, very deep coding, but the shallow level coding we have done and we got the peat, la peat uh, layer and which is actually uh, matching with the Flandrian transgression. So there is the, that is there. And at the upper part, it's around 3,000 years uh, old. And the lower part, we could not reach. But in the middle part, we could reach up to uh, 11,000 to 12,000 uh, before past, uh, before present. And otherwise, uh, we have uh, the ongoing project that is the Living Deltas Hub. Uh, funded by uh, UKRA GCRA, and uh, we felt that that is the research gap in the, especially in the western part. You are very correct, uh, in the western part of Sundarban, uh, so, so called notified Sundarban, that is not Sundarban, there is no forest really. So uh, we will uh, come up with some coding and we will try to correlate the things from the western to the eastern part of the Indian territory. 
Yes, so yes. I, I will update you whenever it will be. Yes, yes. That would be very good yeah. because I'm sure that you are familiar with BDP, Bangladesh Delta Plan 2100. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I have uh, quite a bit of work in that area. And, you know, outside of this talk, maybe we can uh, extend our views and yeah, yeah, I think and, uh, you, you know the ESPA Delta project and DECMA project uh, carried out mm -hmm. in Bangladesh. And yeah. the ESPA Delta was specially for Bangladesh part. And I was the Indian lead from this part. And we worked in Bangladesh and we, we did a lot of field trips in uh, Bangladesh territory. So when did you do that? What there. time? How uh, long it's, you it was uh, in around 2014 to 17. Okay. All right. So it was there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, uh, sir uh, there are uh, um, uh, they, uh, my students wants to listen two words, the mm -hmm. positive effect on environment, po positive effect of COVID-19 on environment. Few words from you. Positive effect was obviously. We are discussing uh, many more things regarding the negative effects of COVID. Negative, um, uh, really, that is true. But uh, few studies, <laughs> studies also uh, <coughs> regarding the positive effect of uh, uh, COVID-19 on environment. So the only positive thing I, I could find that uh, the level of pollution was really reduced a lot. Okay, that that is actually we know everybody we have failed, and uh, the the associated uh, positive thing was that the biodiversity. So if you think about uh, the, especially in our city or town area, uh, the birds, I did not see uh, that kind of bird uh, roaming around me, my house. I never seen it, okay. And you can see the clear sky. There is no haze in the sky. As usual time, the Kolkata is having the haze always. So it is the positive. And if you think about the positive in the, especially in Sundarban, I can tell you that the, the sighting of tiger was much more. So they were roaming around and the wildlife were becoming very, very uh, liberal kind of thing. And they were fearless. They were coming up, up to the fence of the opposite side of the islands, habitated islands. And we have seen a lot, uh, most of a uh, few times we have seen them and uh, just, uh, just walking down beside the fence. So these are positive, but that is positive for me because I could see the tiger, but that was not positive for the villagers. They became scared because if there is any gap within the fence, they can uh, swim over the river and enter into the village. So that is the thing. Uh, otherwise, I think already after this kind of, uh, uh, what I say, anti lock one phase, we have again compensated environment properly. The pollution came back and we have to cope up with the new normal, new pollution kind of thing. And we have to come up with the, some of the new things. It can happen. Uh, these are the only positives, I think. Uh, and another positive for the students, they need not to go to the class uh, compulsorily. There is no <laughs> attendance at this time. <laughs> I think that is good for them, um, but uh, they need to think about their future uh, research or something like that. Uh, they could have got some time, but uh, the mobile was disrupted because everybody was on mobiles, the internet service. So that is another problem. The positive for the uh, internet providers, the mobile operators. Really. Thank yes, you. Sir. Sir, thank you, sir. Sir, um, there is another, uh, with your answer, uh, uh, we can say that this anthropogenic hazard as COVID-19, if we uh, named as anthropogenic hazard, so this anthropo anthropogenic hazard can reduce the effect of physical uh, natural hazard that is like amphoon or cyclone, uh, et cetera. Not really, not really. Because if we consider this uh, as an anthropogenic hazard, anthropogenic. that is, yeah, that is confined within the society itself. And if you think properly, that the, everything is mostly concentrated in the city areas where densely populated places are there, and there are a lot of activities and a lot of mixing up within the people. But in the rural areas, there is less. 
So uh, th th this, this actually has no such connection with the uh, natural hazards. But uh, if you think about this case is unique because the anthropogenic hazard uh, was there, that time natural hazard came. So this kind of multiple hazard situation is really can destruct any, any kind of economy and people of these things. And if you think about this Corona lockdown, in between there was another thing that is the, if you think about the rural area, there was poverty, chronic poverty, then the lockdown, loss of income, and then uh, the Amphan. Okay. So multiple shocks we are getting. In the rural, there's multiple shocks. In the urban poor, there's multiple shocks. And that's why uh, we have to think uh, differently in future, how to manage, how to uh, overcome this kind of situation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sir, we have with us Dr. Shamir Datta from Bhavanipur, uh, uh, Vice Principal Bhavanipur Tutorial College. Uh, Dr. Datta, Shamir Babu. Disconnect away, Shamir Babu. Okay, thank you, sir. One uh, question and answer. Uh, thank, you thank you so much. I, I mean, uh, your talk was so inspiring. It was so factual, so crystal clear. And uh, I therefore really appreciate the insight that you provided. Uh, so, if any of us have any questions, uh, any of us? Mr. Khan, I think you have a, qu a query. Yeah, yeah. Please uh, unmute yourself. You can uh, raise your query. Kindly unmute yourself. Um, first yeah, of yeah. all, um, I congratulate uh, Dr. Tohin Ghosh. It was an excellent presentation which uh, dealt with the practical realities of life. Um, I was after Cyclone Sidr, I was involved in reconstruction of a village uh, called uh, in Balishwar River. It was called Majarchar Island, where there were 140 people living, 140 families completely destroyed, and we rebuilt it. Um, but now I have received pictures. It survived Cyclone Isla, but it did not um, completely survive Amphan. So my question is, um, we had made some interventions on this island which made a sustainable existence possible, like um, raising the embankments, constructing a multi-purpose cyclone shelter, um, improving the sand filtration system for the, because the, the, the water is saline, they can't drink that water water harvesting. With your very extensive knowledge and of this area, um, presumably such interventions are being considered because cyclones are going to be part of our, our life. Uh, is something like that happening as a result of government uh, kind of uh, policy interventions? Yeah, so that's... That's a real question, actually. Uh, what I was trying to uh, communicate uh, that Orissa has learned a lot and they are efficiently managing the things uh, after the super cyclone. How? If we look back, they tried to focus on the mitigation and risk minimization. And again, they were very much eager to come up with some kind of preparedness. And again, the response at, at the time of the event. After the event is over, they were more, in, uh, more intended towards the recovery reconstruction part with some relief. Okay. So all these things are basically the management aspects. Some are long-term, some are short-term. And we need to know how to manage these things. We cannot really prevent cyclones. We need to live with the cyclones. But our optimum aim should be the minimization of the risk and the impact on the life, property, and natural environment. So the long-term uh, planning is not existing. 
So if we do some kind of mitigation planning, we can produce some resilient community, which community can actually cope up with the situation, but it's not there. And community is mostly government dep dependent. If you think about the uh, cloud burst in Mumbai, they came back within three days. But if you think about the Katrina in New Orleans, there is complete evacuation and all these things happened month after month because there is no community participation. But in Mumbai, they came back on the platform after three days. So if the community is more towards the government dependency and their resilience is very low, uh, if there is no mitigation kind of attitude, then it will happen again and again. Okay, so we need to focus on the long-term mitigation plan, short-term response and preparedness, and again, long-term uh, risk minimization process to produce a resilient community. And then we can see the change, what Orissa actually done. So that, that is the only answer I have at this moment. That is a, a very good answer. I think uh, you are absolutely right. We will have to learn to live in Bangladesh in, for the Southwest area. World Bank made available $2 billion to, they had constructed these folders for preservation of agriculture and so on. And they, they are doing a project which is called long-term monitoring to see how we can improve the design of these folders so that they are more sustainable. Yeah. So that's a very good intervention. Uh, it is not a choice for Bangladesh to move 40 million people from there to somewhere else because the whole of Bangladesh is very heavily populated. So one has to learn yeah. to live with the situation and um, the incidence of the cyclones. So yeah, I, I completely agree with what you said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Tuhin Ghosh. Thank you so much for your wonderful talk. And uh, I thank Professor Khalikuzaman and Mr. Raya Khan too for enriching this discussion. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, before we move on, let me just say that uh, during our last technical session, uh, uh, there was due to some technical error, we could not hear the concluding part of uh, Dr. Kasturi Sinha Ghosh. So madam, if you are here, uh, we would like to give you a space where you can please conclude your talk. Madam, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm there. Madam is here, madam is here. Madam, we really okay. apologize for the inconvenience caused due to technical no, issues. Not at all, not at all, okay. not at all. So, okay. so yeah. So, and uh, so Dr. Jointa Mukherjee, if you are here, Dr. Jointa Mukherjee, if you are here, you were chairing the session during that time. So, may I request you to please carry on? Uh... Okay. Uh, and how okay. much time do I have? Madam, uh, right now, actually, since we are running short of time, so I think if you can wind up within um, three to four minutes, it will be very good for all of us. <laughs> okay. But I'll, uh, I'll try. Okay, I'll try. My apologies again, but uh, okay, yeah, sure. okay, thank you, thank you. Not at all, not at all. Okay, sure, yeah. I'll try it out. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so like I was, since I was talking about two cases that I've taken, I will just quickly I'll talk about those two cases and because that will help us to understand the real, uh, you know, situation out there. So this is, uh, I talk about a lady, she's a 38 years old lady, she stays in uh, the Hoto uh, 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 Rock of Nodia district, and everything was going fine. Her husband was staying outside. He was working as a in a Sholapur in Maharashtra. And she was there with her three kids and her ailing mother-in-law. And all of a sudden, this lockdown was uh, announced. But anyhow, but uh, since the money, I mean, he was she was not able to get the money from her husband because she was not able to go to the bank. She was having some financial crunch. But anyhow, she could really do uh, with it and meanwhile within this lockdown period also she had the, the eldest daughter who is 16 years old she got the, uh, you know the, of uh, you know she thought of plan, plan of getting her married because this was the best time for her because uh, she she will have to have spend very less amount of money and then she can get her 
child which is a minor who's a minor she can get her married off so this one problem uh, this is one uh, observation that child marriage is a propensity of child marriage is there now her husband re returns back as a migrant labor and uh, so uh, being a migrant labor he was tested and he was quarantined another important thing that she shared i mean just casually she said that my husband comes every eve, uh, every morning and he, he gets the vegetable and he goes away so you can understand from quarantine center she is uh, this uh, this uh, her husband is visiting her daily for delivering of vegetables so this is something which is ridiculous anyway now the th second uh, um, uh, this was about the lady who is in the domestic sphere and the, now i'm talking about uh, uh, the health worker frontline health worker she is a, a medical professional she commutes from kolkata to tehotto every day and in this period of lockdown she has not been provided with any vehicle she has to manage of her own okay and uh during log I'm, i mean if it's a night stay she they, she doesn't have a place to stay if at all she has been given a place to stay that is in a very dilapidated situation washrooms are really in hygienic and if she is if she has uh, you know along with other uh, team members if she has a duty in the quarantine center she does, she cannot use the washroom because of the exposure of the uh you know the infection so from all this there are so many more things that i could have discussed but uh my core uh, observation or the the findings which i can tell you is that definitely there's a uh, you know the secondary uh, impact of coronavirus is really there women are being you know has to face domestic violence we are having cases of trafficking also we have uh, you know in due course of time and from uh, secondary uh, literature review i could un find out uh, cases of trafficking is also you know there then child marriage propensity of getting uh, their uh, uh, minor children getting married so early at an early, early age that is there then uh, since the icds centers and nearby uh, primary healthcare centers are closed down uh, women are not getting uh, you know appropriate healthcare uh, so their sexual and uh, reproductive rights or health that is at stake uh, the, the the women who are pregnant ladies their you know the antenatal and postnatal care cares are being uh, uh, you know affected uh, asha workers are uh, finding it difficult to speak to the people because they uh, the moment she goes and visits these uh, uh, the, the local people the the they they're just closing the door because they don't don't want to speak to the asha worker because if he saying that ye to amake thode niye chole jabe she will take me to the quarantine center so these things are there the young adolescent girls the menstrual hygiene again is a problem she uh, she could get the sanitary night napkins girls could not get the sanitary napkin from school or the vending machines or from uh, icds centers but now she doesn't have that opportunity she has to get uh, you know back to the old age uh, menstrual uh, uh, you know those practices which are in hygienic so these things are there the malnutrition again is a thing that women or the adolescent girls and girls would uh, face because they will basically get the best food for the household and the least the what she can do is just have some food which is has no of nutritive value she will go, not go to the toilets because uh, of the infection uh, and in uh, rather she would uh, have uh, the, the problem of getting in uh, you know gastrointestinal and other urinary, urinary tract infections these things are there so my recommendations in a very uh, i mean you know uh, another the health workers from the health workers which what we could understand is that now since the monsoons are coming say uh, you know problem of dengue and uh, you know would add up water lagging logging that would uh, 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 create a more of much of more problem and leading to the hazardous situation adding up to the coronavirus infection of, of course now my quick uh, you know uh, uh, what i can say is like uh, you know good mapping system has to be there so that we can identify those pockets or those uh, area families in which women are uh, facing difficult are in really in some difficult situations or children are uh, you know um, they, they you can uh, we are suspecting that they might get trafficked or uh, or are facing abuse 
when uh, we have to have innovative counts and you know counseling centers should have some innovative technologies to provide some psychological psychosocial uh, you know uh, help can be or services can be there then uh, in fact women uh, commissions both center and central and state women commissions they can uh, have some baseline surveys to find out the actual picture and understand uh, right from uh, the women that what they actually want and what they are going through uh, then uh, testing of the migrant ladies uh, of the migrant uh, uh, women uh, i mean the, the families of the migrants that is more uh, that is also uh, necessary then uh, icds should start working and uh, you know following the norms like social distancing and everything that by maintaining that because they are the key providers health providers that is there and uh, panchayats can also do very good work uh, you know in uh, 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 in in spreading awareness and uh, you know the, uh, have uh, improving the hygienic conditions in fact the public engineering department also has a very important major role to play uh, they can for uh, you know improving the infrastructures of the uh, rural areas uh, providing water uh, potable water uh, uh, water uh, water available to the household within the proximity of the uh, living area um, health checkups obviously can be done to the primary health se sectors and uh, you know primary healthcare centers and the icds uh then like if we in city area if we have big bazaars and fences and why can't we have you know something of that sort some mobile uh you know uh, selling uh, uh, you know in, in in mobile vehicles why can't we sell uh groceries uh medicines kasturi, and... kasturi madam uh can you please wind it up within two minutes sure. thank sure. you thank you okay and uh, then adequate uh, you know <laughs> adequate uh, training has to be provided to the uh, particularly to the base uh, you know frontline workers um and there should be some epidemic uh, centers or disaster man disaster management sectors in the district so covid let covid be uh, something which can we have to fight but it should not become the instrument for promoting uh, gender discrimination in our society thanks a lot thank you ma'am thank, thank you ma'am for a beautiful lecture so uh, i really apologize because i had to terminate you uh, no. from speaking no 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 due Not to internet problem uh, from the seat of chia person um, uh, i want to ask you that you have uh, talked uh, talked about the uh, specific plight of the uh, women of tehotto district of uh, tehotto block of nodia district but uh, in general this is the plight of the uh, women everywhere uh, post yes. covid 19 not only yes. of tehotto block but yes. in general because no because that was the area which i took in general yes because, yeah, that is that is uh, in, in all the rural areas this is something which we are looking into i mean it's just because that was my study area but yes uh, this is something which is very uh, common in every rural areas because migrant women who are coming from far off places they also delivered their child in the yes. train and we have seen the flight yes. of the women so yes. this is a very natural common plight of the women everywhere yes yes, yes. ma'am if anybody has any other question please or i will wind up the session yeah, yes yes sir thank you please thank wind you. up the session wind up the session yeah. thank you thank you ma'am and you. thank you for giving the opportunity for you know talking for the second time thank, thank you, you ma'am no matter we will invite to uh, for your another uh, webinar series so <laughs> I think we will be. We will, yeah, we will organize soon, and then we will. Yeah, we'll be able to hear you. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I also invite you to our Anitali Subhashan University lectures and uni. Uh, you know, webinars when we'll have. We'll have thank good time you. together. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. हाँ जानते थे इतना ओवर इस इट ओवर ओके 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 थैंक यू सो मच आई आई रियली थैंक मैडम कोस्टरी सिन्हा घोष फॉर हर एलिमिनेटिंग चॉक थैंक यू सो मच आई आल्सो थैंक डॉक्टर जानते मुखर्जी हु वाज इन चेयर एंड ही हैज मैनेज द सेशन वेरी ब्यूटीफुली थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच एंड ड्यूरिंग आवर वैलिडिक्चर so sir if you are here i thank you again and uh, uh, see during these two days we uh, all the sessions were so much participative all the sessions were so much enriching uh, so uh, it it enlightened us in many ways it opened many new avenues uh, and many new directions 
uh, to think in, in many new ways. So I thank all our resource persons and I do thank all the participants. So now, uh, before we uh, formally go to our valedictory or vote of thanks, I would like to uh, request, uh, we have with us, we have with us, uh, yeah, we have with us Dr. Shreya Bhattacharya. Madam, we have with us Dr. Shreya Bhattacharya, who is currently an associate professor uh, from the Department of English Studies, Central University of Jharkhand, Rachi. Madam, uh, can you please brief up your experience? I mean, uh, how was it? We have received a lot from you in the two days. So <laughs> I do not know how, how, how do you feel? So if you can please brief up uh, how you felt and how were the two days? I think Madam is disconnected now. No, 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 no Madam. No, Madam is okay, very okay. much here. <laughs> no, okay. no, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it yeah. almost seems as if, uh, and as Ashit said in the morning, that, that I'm part of the organizers, uh, of, uh, part of the organizing team, you know, <laughs> because uh, these two days were uh, really lovely. But more than that, you know, when uh, Lipika called me around 10 days back uh, and said that she's planning something and then we got into the nitty gritties and uh, then uh, we thought about it. She discussed it with all of you and gradually uh, the entire program of Eco Exist 2020 was conceptualized. I think uh, it was very enriching and I think the best part was that because it was multidisciplinary, so we could hear the viewpoints and perspectives of uh, you know scholars and intellectuals from different disciplines. You know whether it be medicine or whether it be physics or whether it be oceanography or uh, uh, a wide variety, a wide spectrum. And another good part of it, you know, we, uh, the organizers were able to accommodate uh, people from different places, from different countries. And uh, it was good that there was so much representation from Bangladesh and from different parts of our own country too. And there were uh, students, there were research scholars, there were faculty members, people from the industry, people from uh, academic administration, uh, people from uh, medicine, people from different disciplines. And I think overall, uh, all of us had to kind of leave our comfort zones and speak about issues uh, which really bothered us, about which we really care. You know, uh, like otherwise I would have remained perhaps confined to literature and uh, somebody would have remained confined to physics, somebody to geography, but it was not like that. We were forced to think out of our regular uh, you know, boxes, to think differently, to think about those things and speak about those things about which we are genuinely concerned, about which we are genuinely uh, disturbed. So I think overall it was a, a very good experience and uh, particularly for me, it was a very enriching experience. And also, uh, it made me very happy because there has been so much of friendship and uh, camaraderie. When I joined, uh, you know, this this group of friends, I knew Lipika, of course, whom I have adopted as my younger sister, yes, and I knew you. Ashit. But now I have uh, <laughs> I have more friends, you know. Uh, uh, Saheli is there, Shritoma is there, uh, you know. It, it it feels like one big family, and uh, I congratulate. Uh, all these young budding scholars and faculty members. And uh, I congratulate the administration of Belda College for being so supportive. And uh, I congratulate you for your resourcefulness, for your initiative, and for your interest in both uh, academics as also in being uh, so socially committed. Good luck in all your future ventures. And thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, madam. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, Professor Khaliku Saman is also with us, sir. sir. May I request you to please uh, share your experience in brief? I mean, if you're, yeah, sir is here. Uh, 
So yes. before that, I just want to introduce uh, Mr. Ayer Khan with all of you again. He had made his presentation yesterday, uh, but today let me introduce again. Uh, Mr. Ayer Khan is the Managing Director of Medway Consultancy Services, United Kingdom, London. And uh, he is again here today, sir. We are very happy to uh, have you uh, in our, during our valedictory session. Thank you so much, sir. So before we uh, hear from you, I would uh, request uh, Professor Khaluku Zaman to please share your experience. Thank you, Absolutely. sir. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, I will just echo the sentiment of Sreya, madam. Uh, you know, I did not know many people, you know, all of you within the last few days through the communication, I got to know, uh, you know, Sri Toma Soheli and uh, obviously Lipika Mandol and, you know, Oshit Pandey and, I even had an opportunity to hear out uh, the principal, the Manavendra uh, uh, Mondo. Mondo. Man Mondol and everyone else. So uh, talking about the positivity of COVID, yes, we have to look for positive experience out of any challenges that we face in life. And COVID just one of those experiences that uh, threw us all in this, uh, in this mess. Uh, looking at this as a half full versus half empty glass, COVID gave us the opportunity to reevaluate ourselves, to reflect on our activities as a human, as a society. So COVID gave us this opportunity to connect with you, the Belda College, which probably I wouldn't have otherwise. And this experience that I have to getting to know so many beautiful and uh, you know uh, nice people and the good organizers and scholars, that's definitely uplifting. And this is one of the positive you know, outcome of the COVID. So, uh, you know, COVID gave this opportunity, Belda College, organized this uh, coexist, eco-exist. And I mentioned in one of the emails that I sent to uh, Sri Thoma Madam, that eco-exist is a beautiful name because if you, if you connect those two words, eco first and then exist. So we need sir, to really- Sir, I interrupt here again. Sir, I interrupt here. This name was uh, suggested by Dr. Lipika Mondol. So, so on the credit goes to, to Lipika her. Mondol. Definitely. Kudos to Lipika Mondol. I mentioned it specifically in my email yeah, that yeah, eco yeah, exists. Exactly. If you take exactly. the eco as one word and exist is the second word, then it becomes a beautiful theme of the conference yeah. that we definitely need a change in our paradigm. Definitely need to... There was a, uh, I think, uh, is a Sri Thoma Madam from philosophy department or someone? Yes. I don't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know all the details, but philosophy of life is such that there is a branch in philosophy called deep ecology. Deep ecology is looking yes, into the ecosystem, into the planet in a deeper way, in a more grandiose way, that how we human are not, shouldn't be the dominating species on this planet. We are just one of the 8.7 million species, and we should have respect for all the species that we have, flora and fauna. So that attitude is called the deep ecology. Deep ecology is taught in many philosophy departments. Like in Jahanginagar University in Dhaka, they have a course called deep ecology. I'm just mentioning in the sense that this eco exist is along those lines, that we need to really exist with the ecosystems, not as a dominating species. Yes, I'm a geologist, so I try to look at a broader picture. As you know, that dinosaurs used to be the dominating species on the planet. They lasted for 100 million years. We as human species, yes, we are dominating. We are uh, you know, very intelligent species, but we have been here on this planet only for a couple million years. As organized society, actually, we have been here only for a few thousand years. But within that few thousand years, we are capable of changing the natural processes. We are capable of you know, causing tremendous you know, devastation to our planet. So from that perspective, we are smart, but not really the best species that uh, I would say. So we need to really look deep into, into this philosophical aspect of our life. So going back to, I don't want to uh, you know, longer, uh, longer it, and thanks for, thanks uh, all of you to give me this opportunity. But as I said, Belda College, uh, you know, organize this event that would be a quality of any event I have seen anywhere in the world at any major universities. So that is a positive outcome of this uh, COVID, that due to the COVID, all of us are kind of available and we yes. can participate in this yes, uh, eco-conference 
which as I said, in my mind, it is just as good as any conference that I've attended in major universities in the world. And I had the opportunity to do that over the last 22 years that I teach at a US university. So thank you again. And I hope this is just the beginning. We pr And I also take up the invitation of uh, uh, Dr. Manavendra Mondal that if we ever come to Kolkata area, then we definitely will let you know and probably we'll, uh, we'll have opportunity to visit your beautiful campus. Uh, so all together, thank you very much. Thanks all and thank uh, good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Your golden words are uh, really treasure for us. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, actually, yes. e coexist. E for E is indicating in a in both way. That is one is electronically exactly. because our platform is electronic, and yeah. uh, E again E is used as E is indicating environmental. Environment, yes. yeah. Yeah. So, so, for so that, there are two dimensions. No, so it caught my yeah. eyes. That's what I mentioned. Many, many, many it caught many my eyes, and I thought it was a very catchy phrase. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we have with us Mr. Aye Khan. Sir, can you uh, please uh, say uh, a few words? I mean, a very sh in a very brief, uh, how was your experience in the last two days? Well, thank you, Dr. Mishra. First of all, I am hugely um, privileged and honored to be um, kind of interacting with you. I was not very sure when Shushma approached me. I said, I'm a simple engineer and uh, you are kind of eminent in your field, all of you. And it doesn't uh, look right. She, she twisted my arm. She said, no, no, you, you know, give us a subject and talk about it. So I talked about my experience of living in the UK, having lived in Bangladesh for 33 years, living in a lockdown situation. Um, for every, um, I mean, Every disaster, there is a silver lining, and there are lots of positives that uh, can be uh, taken from this, this pandemic. Like, for instance, in, in London now, people are going to work by cycles. A lot of cycles are being bought. That will reduce pollution in a city like London, so that is a, a, a positive. And also, uh, yesterday in my presentation, I mentioned that do we need growth all the time? Politicians are obsessed with positive growth. But positive growth brings with it other uh, uh, undesirable consequences. Maybe we can live with uh, no growth. And uh, if that helps the environment, perhaps that is a thing to do. So uh, all in all, I think, um, uh, it has been a wonderful experience. I have, I have gained more than I have given. So thank you very much. And a huge congratulations to Belda College for uh, taking this initiative to organize this conference, which is of so much relevance to all of us. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Shushama, if you are here, can you hear me? She actually connected you uh, us to you. So I really thank Shushama for that. Uh, so Shushama, tumi ki acho? Okay, okay. I'll let her uh, let her be in connection. Uh, but uh, till then, uh, we have with us Dr. Jointu Mukherjee. He has been very supportive in our endeavor. He is also our uh, IQAC member, and uh, he is the head of the Department of English, Bilda College. Sir, you have been so patiently uh, attending all these sessions since yesterday. So I really thank you, sir. Sir, can you please share your experience uh, about the conference? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Sure. yes, sir. Yes. So I was uh, first and foremost, I want to tell that I, was, I am really amazed that to see the energy and the bonhomie of the speakers, participants, audience, and uh, organizing team, even being the part of the organizing team, I have learned a lot and uh, uh, primarily, I was a little uncomfortable because uh, being new to this webinar, but slowly I became comfortable. And uh, throughout these two, two days, we have learned a lot about COVID and it's a new challenge. We have learned that. And uh, still, uh, as much as we deliberate and discuss the problem, because more confused, but we have to remove this confusion through more and more webinar. And I hope that in the future, we can organize this sort of webinar uh, we more successfully. 
and thanks to all the participants, speakers, and my peers, my colleagues. And uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mukherjee. Thank you so much. We would also, yeah, we would also have been happy if uh, Dr. Ramitabha Patacharya were with us, but I, I am unsure whether he is there or not. Uh, Amitabha, what is the connection? Okay. Okay, okay, sorry. I am not able to connect on video. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir, no issue. You okay, may... no problem, sir. At least if you share your experience. Yeah, no. Can you please? Yeah. For the first time, I have heard about you a lot from Shreya. Yeah, yeah. College, but I know some of you by name also. But this was the first time I got to share with you. This was the first time I spoke on, I attended a conference on such a different topic from what I work. I work on fruits and detergents all the time. First time I spoke on something totally different. And for the first time I got, I spoke on the electronic media instead of speaking face to face. It was a new experience altogether. And the way you have organized it under these circumstances with so much, so much restrictions is really wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I, I will uh, now Dita, like to, I would, yes. Dita, ha, ha. With us, Dr. Alok Chandra Shamal from okay. Kulani University. Actually, okay, okay. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Alok? Can you hear me, Alok? Dr. Shamal? Dr. Shamal, can you, can you hear us? No, unmute mute to unmute to Yeah, can you please unmute yourself? Okay. Okay, yeah, we, we, we yeah, yeah. Thank you. I think um, he's a very famous environmentalist because okay, okay. Uh, he have many more, uh, many more research work on different field in uh, environment, in different fields of environment. So, all look. Say something. Sir, okay. uh, 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 okay. uh, 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 Thank you to all and thank you to me, especially Lipika. And Lipika yesterday sent me the link. I previously discussed about the, the international seminar, prepared uh, international seminar. And uh, he also invited me. But uh, due to some my previous schedule, previous schedule, I am unable to uh, attach in this seminar. And uh, she is very energetic and enthusiastic. And I also here in Kalyan University, I uh, organized two seminar, and we discussed with Lipika about this his experience, her experience, and he also <laughs> discussed many times with me. And yesterday I listen in this seminar in YouTube that I have no time that time and today I and most of time I listen this seminar it was very interactive and interesting and all our speakers are very good and very interactive also and from some speakers from the Bangladesh are very much interesting and their experience are very good and Thank you all, energetic. I seen your the, to the four, three, four madams are very energetic and uh, yeah, organizing this seminar beautifully. And thank you all. Thank you, Alok. Okay, thank you. Amra, Ami Shopshama, Alok, you have taken different suggestions. Ni. Even in this seminar, you know, I have taken uh, so many suggestions to organize this seminar, e conference also. Thank you. Thank you, Alok. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Resi Shamal. Thank you so much. Okay. We are having you, with us, yeah, from our faculty fraternity, we have Dr. Rakhide Sharma. Rakhide, if you are here, uh, can you please unmute yourself and say, uh, oh, I mean, uh, in very brief, how did you feel uh, these two days and what was your experience? Uh, but before we hear from Rakhide, uh, let me tell you, uh, may I request any of our participants uh, okay. to please share their feedback? Yeah. Please. You please raise your hand. We will unmute you, or you can unmute yourself. Just raise your hand, and after Rakhidi, we will give you the chance. Rakhidi, if you were here, uh, 
Can you hear us, Rakiti? Yes, yes, Hi, yes, yes. Yes. Hello. Okay. 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 Uh, I can hear from uh, last two days. I know I am here. Uh, uh, but uh, first, I would like to congratulate the. Although I'm the part of the quiz, but uh, I'm not the, the actively participate in this. Uh, participated in this conference. It's a very well. Uh, well done. I will. I should say uh, um, uh, conference. Because I am hearing most of the webinar in from my home, both national and international. But uh, this is at par from any international uh, um, conference. And since we are from all all different from different places, we the organizer are organizing this uh, program with uh, both national and international um, experts. And it's really very uh, good, uh, informative and uh, successful um, conference, I should say. And congratulations to all, uh, including me, because part of the <laughs> Builder College. And uh, uh, thank you to all um, experts who participated in our college seminar. And uh, thank you. OK, thank, thank you, you Rakiti. Thank you so much. Thank you. So our participants, uh, none of us have raised hand yet. But, uh, they, have, but they have commented uh, in the chat box. Okay, okay, okay. Any of them? Yes, uh, it's from speak? Dr. Ali Hussein. Thanks to all respected resource persons as well as organizers for okay. organizing such a wonderful and knowledgeable international conference. Thank you so much. Thank you. I now request uh, our IQSA director, Dr. Ashit Panda, to uh, share his experience and then we will uh, get on to a vote of thanks. Yes. Indeed. Uh... Such very wonderful experience which we passed through the last two days. Uh, we have uh, privilege to have among us um, academicians, distinguished academicians, doctors, distinguished, distinguished engineer, and professionals from various fields. Uh, and all of us uh, felt certainly enriched during the interactive discussions which took place in these two days. And we developed new relationships with uh, so many. Uh, distinguished faculty members and uh, professionals from different fields. Uh, it was really a memorable experience for all of us. I personally thank all the uh, resource persons uh, who are from different countries, from Bangladesh, from India, uh, from UK, Mr. Ayer Khan, Mr. Muhammad Khalid uh, Dr. Seya Fadajajajo, Dr. Amatjabha Fadajajajo, and Dr. Tuhin, who made a very beautiful presentation today uh, in the afternoon and all other resource persons uh, who were with us yesterday. I also personally thank all the uh, participants, all the attendees who have been very much patient with us and attended the seminar for uh, almost more than uh, 14 hours. The seminar was, uh, uh, seminar uh, took the time of more than 14 hours. Uh, it continued for the 14 hours and they have been very much patient with us. Uh, they have uh, attended the seminar throughout. Uh, and they have been interactive. All of us certainly have enjoyed the interactive sessions. And I personally thank the program coordinator, Dr. Sridhar Misro, who had uh, beautifully coordinated the inter program and co coordinator, Dr. Sohani Choudhury. I personally thank the Banking Secretary, Dr. Deepika Mondal, who has organized beautifully this uh, e conference, e coexist 2020, and invited uh, so many uh, distinguished faculty members and distinguished speakers from different uh, spheres. Uh, thus, as the seminar is multidisciplinary, all of us uh, have been very much enriched. And uh, as Shiyadi told us that we had to leave our comfort zone and we uh, had a lot from other sides. And we are passing through such a difficult time that all of us uh, were compelled uh, to deal with things which we never thought of dealing with. And we find that uh, people uh, of Sanskrit literature are also dealing with uh, COVID-19 people from uh, literature subjects also are um, presenting papers on COVID-19. Thus, uh, we have to leave our comfort zones. Uh, thus, I think the two days uh, which we uh, passed, uh, which we uh, see, which we enjoyed throughout the two days, the interactive sessions, the interactions, the intellectual deliverance which we experienced in these two days uh, uh, have certainly been uh, very much 
uh, helpful, very much uh, beneficial for all of us as intellectuals, as it, as it will help us uh, in our future in doing further researches and opening up new avenues and finding out new, new avenues to tackle the social problems uh, with COVID-19. And uh, thank you all again, uh, distinguished uh, participants, distinguished research person, distinguished speakers, or the organizers. Uh, uh, the coordinator, the co uh, organizing secretary, I personally extend my heartiest thanks to all of you. Over to Sito. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Roshit Panda. Thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, Sitoma? Yes. You have with us, Subir. For, yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I was about to say just. I... Okay, okay. Okay, Shubita, Jodi Thako to me, Ektu Shamne Ashpe, Ektu unmute Kore. Jarjuni Puro Bapata Hoetse. Shubita, Duto Kotamra Shuntechai. Duto Kotamra Shuntechai. Maneku informal with the Shuntechai, formal with the Duto Kotash. It's been a pleasure. Mane Bapata is a very important event. We have to rely on the 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 so, Bhuvishwate, obviously, Evave, Kono opportunity for our first time with Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Shubita. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now uh, before I uh, formally ask Lipika Lipika Di to deliver her vote of thanks, I want to thank Lipika, uh, Dr. Lipika Mondol for her extensive support that she has provided. Uh, so, thank you, Madam. Thank you so much. Now I would request you to, yeah. Now I would request you to please formally declare the vote of thanks and then uh, close the meeting. Thank you, you Sweetama. Actually, today, today we have ended our journey of Ecoexist 2020. But I think this is not the end of our journey. Ecoexist 2020. E for electro electronically. E for environmentally, ecologically, and also geographically. We are coexisting with our uh, two countries, that is India and Bangladesh. We are, we are, we are coexisting with India and Bangladesh. So um, we are, uh, I want to say that is not the end of our journey. So, uh, Sritama said that I'll uh, give a vote of thanks. So, Sritama, thank you, Sritama. Uh, on behalf of our college, Bilda College, the uh, and the entire fraternity of our institution, first of all, I extend my most sincere thanks to Dr. Manavendra Mundal, chief patron of this program, and honorable princi principal of our college. With his blessings and encouragement, we are able to make this event successful. Co e coexist 2020 successful. And I, I would like to extend my uh, heartiest thanks to Dr. Kaleko Jaman and Dr. Uh, uh, a. F. Choudhury, registered Dhaka University of Engineering and Technology, Bangladesh, and Professor Mukaddam Hoshen, Bangladesh Open University, and Dr. I. A. Khan, Managing Director, Midway Consultancy, London, Dr. Amitabha Bhattacharya, Sikkim University, Department of Physics, Sikkim University, and Dr. Poyas Thomas, Department of Philosophy, Assam University. We are very happy that we have uh, with us Dr. Sreya Bhattacharji. It is our great pleasure that we have with us till now Dr. Sreya Bhattacharji, who have continuously uh, attended the session, all the session and chairs, uh, many of them, and have guided us at the uh, at the time of uh, in the way of encouragement and uh, enriched and appreciated our participants. I would uh, like to extend my special thanks 
to Professor Kalikud Jamal, who is also Chair Professor in the Department of Geology and Physics, Lockhaven University, Pennsylvania. It is uh, early morning there. Sir, uh, still, he's still joining with us and he has spread his time for us. Sir, I hope we will able to hear you in a more better way at our institution uh, at Belda College. I also wish, wish to express my gratitude to Professor uh, Hoshin, Provisti Bangladesh Open University for extending his hand for collaboration with Bangladesh, with uh, Belda College, uh, that I would like to extend my special thanks to him for uh, new dimensions of education. And I would like to extend my thanks to Professor H. Odhari for his thought-provoking keynote address. I would like to extend my thanks to Ms. Sushma Mukherjee. I would like to extend my thanks, special thanks to Sushma Mukherjee for uh, her uh, continuous cooperation in various ways to organize this Indo-Bangladesh venture that is Eco Exist 2020. I would like to thank Dr. Ashit Ponda, Director IQSC, Belda College, Dr. Sritama Mukherjee, convener and uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Philosophy, Belda College, Dr. Shaili Choudhury, Joint Secretary, uh, Department HOD and Assistant Professor, Department of Sociology, Pilda College, Dr. Jantha Mukherjee, HOD, Department of English, Dr. Anandama Shina, Dep Assistant Professor, Department of Economics. Uh, apart from this, Rick Roy, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science, uh, Rajoshi Gain, Assistant Professor, Department of Physical Education, Dr. Sujata Ghosh, Department of English, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Dr. Mukesh Pradhan, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, I would like to extend my hearty thanks to the paper presenters across from different states from India, researchers, academicians, participants, students, and all the YouTube viewers, and uh, those people who are joining with us from the industries, uh, etc. On behalf of my institution, I would like to invite all the em eminent resource person from Bangladesh, UK, USA, and different states of our uh, different states of India. I would like to invite all of you in our institution so that we will organize the next part of our Eco Exist Eco Exist 2021. I think that will be a better environment than we will free from COVID and we will free from uh, the uh, effects of COVID pandemic. So we will uh, meet physically in our college, in our next e-conference, international e-conference that is e-coexist. Thank you all, keep safe and keep healthy. Thank you. So with this, with this, we uh, formally close the today conference. Yes, and uh, Sritamadi, please kindly mention that we are going to post the feedback link in yeah, the yeah, WhatsApp group. That. Okay, uh, dear participants, we are going to post the feedback link in the WhatsApp group EcoExist 2020, and the link will be active for one hour. We will be posting the link within 30 minutes and from that time after posting it, the link will be active for one hour. Kindly give in your feedbacks so that it will be easier for us to provide the certificates to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 <laughs> thank you, Savaike. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Shubhendu Dao Thannabad. Shubhendu Dao Professor Khalikujjaman Amandeshwange Aachel. Yes, yes.
पीरियड <laughs> आंतरिक निश्चय